Pass you by like damn right. Good old times pass you by like damn right. Damn God, damn God, you are me in a lifeline. Damn God. New song out. Bro, this is a banger. Bro. What would I rate it? Top two? Top two? It's like diff different type of vibes, but. I'll keep on dialing. I'll keep and make me feel. Come on, vibe with me. Time, yeah. But quality vibes. Believe in yourself. I think, yeah. Dreams are made to happen. Whatever it's changing 999 for the best. Truck and nice bad landing. Those times slowly fading. No time for us any. I was sipping on Molly. Kill my. From Gordon. That's all fine, yeah. Yeah, two. Two. But you buy light. Good old times, but you buy light. Good old times, but you buy light. Damn right. Banger, bro. Actual banger. It's insane. Hope all y'all doing good as always. And uh, today is React Monday. So uh, let's start with uh, TikTok cringe. Croissant. Order a croissant. You order a coffee. They do. Look at this. So I ordered the croissant. <clears throat> uh, bang. Manian wines in my head. If we're counting, imagine. there are seven. Yeah, imagine days. drinking. Three days. What a loser. For my US Actual Mania. loser. Always paid by the government. He's sus. And mm. Romaine. <laughs> 60, come on, bro. Like. Mm hmm. With your bitch ass. I remember thunder for this bitch. Yo. I can feel it. Pause. The absolute. <laughs> Damn, that was a deep one. Pause. Have her Pause, the man. last bend over. Stop this on my face when rest in the day avenge me. Shut up, nerd. Actually, I am. What's up, Mick, bitch ass? Meat sounds above. Who's me? Pause. The croissant. Hey, right, three hearts. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. You find meat? You shit. No. Wait. <laughs> You shit. That's not what she said though. But that actually auto. <laughs> oh, you about to Bro. become meat. Didn't even realize that. Knock your ass out, co. Paralyzed. Hold on. Force. Hold up. Wait, Wait a, a minute. minute. This can work. Bye, bitch. Hello, hello. Time to die. The evil Lich King is here. Um, not really a way out. <laughs> yeah, you cooked. I can't take the legs? Extra protein. What's up, pussy hoes? You ready to die? My name, Market. What? Yeah. Oh, what? what? <laughs> Don't be <laughs> I'm horny as fuck, man. man. Hey, four hearts. We going up. One by one. Appreciate it. Surely the uh, next one is five hearts. Oh, we went down. You in what army, bro? I am the evil. I am the number one Lich King, the Necromancer. I am that fella. Hey, I am that fella. Die. Hello. How amusing. Take care of them, Zarel. You're not him, buddy. You're not him. Yeah, walk away. Look at the gang. I'll enjoy this. Oh, you enjoyed that? Pussy boy! No! You're lucky. I'll get you next time. Opinions on cheeseburgers? Rug burger. Rug burger. <laughs> Who did it? That was spam. Huh? Bro is an egg. Uh. Oh, you're cucumbered. Uh. What? Who is in danger? Bro, where's the enemy? 
What are you two two? What? You and Okay. Seven hearts, we take those. Into Fallout games, nice. Bro, you've been missing out on Fallout. Alright. Meant to sound like Just Hold or. No, I didn't actually. Influenced by him. And it just happens we have similar um, sounding. It's just like um, Hoi 4. Nice. Alright. Let's get into the links where we left off. What? They just didn't beat their shit. <laughs> For real. I mean, yeah, I guess. How would you walk out? Everybody knows you're afraid of cats. The prank. Yeah, guys, great prank. I don't think it's funny. I, I want to do it. Guys, please. Guys, please. Guys, please. I don't think it's funny, guys. I can't move. Yeah, that's probably wise that you don't move. I've seen so many movies and so many TV shows. In one second, if this tiger wants to kill me, the tiger's going to kill me. Yeah. Guys, did you think this through all the way? Not really. No, really. No. No. How could you do this to me? What do I do? Try to get the, out of the room, bud. There's a door to you right in front of you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Now he's more concerned about the lock than Bro, the tiger. What? No, 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 no. Nah, that's oh, actually oh, fucked up, God. though. Guys, I can't. Dang it. Good, he's brushing his teeth. Go. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Look at this. If this is a prank, now that's actually fucked up. <laughs> look, look at the poster in front of your face. You think that's funny? Oh, oh, shit. shit. Just hang in there, pal. Guys, I don't think this is funny. Who, who's there? Just let me, let me in, guys. It's not Sal, funny. it's super easy. You just have to say this sentence. Go ahead. Let me in. I'm the baby bitch boy. <laughs> let me in. I'm the baby bitch boy. <laughs> no, no, that, that was what Joe wanted you to say. Uh, you for you real? Say, what? Mer's funnier, oh, wait, that's smarter, the other. Better than me. I'm bugging. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Nah, I was fucked. Have you guys noticed that in the boys, Homelander does not kill anybody who doesn't fear him? Let me show you what I mean. We first see this type of interaction in season oh. one when Butcher has still well. What do you mean, wait? No, this is where we left off on Reaction Monday. Because the other Monday, we couldn't react to all of it. Yeah. Well, as a hostage and talks to Homelander. Most people standing where, where you are be pissing their pants, terrified, but you. I sure you, you, your heart's pounding, but you're not afraid. It's anger. <laughs> it's a new one for me. And funny enough, in this scene, right after Madeline says, I fear you, I'm scared of you. I said, I'm scared of of you i'm scared of you homelander then lasers straight through her face we then see another interaction like this when yeah, homelander goes one. up to floor 82 to threaten stan Edgar. that's interesting the cost of destroying the whole company. if you're not scared of him he won't I don't kill think you i appreciate your tone sir not much at all and i don't appreciate that the fda now preening around and in season three when huey stands up to homelander Ooh. 
Mind you, Huey doesn't have any temporary V in his system at this moment. He is a straight up normal human standing up to Homelander. And again, we see this when Homelander confronts Vogelbaum and talks to him about all the trauma that he caused Homelander. I'm the world's greatest superhero. That's kind You're my greatest failure. Damn. Vogelbaum straight up says, you are my biggest mistake, my biggest failure. And you know, usually if anybody says this to Homelander. Hold on, give me a minute. Let me die. Hold on, give me a minute. Let me He is killing them right then and there on the spot. And then we see this again in season four when Barbara is the only scientist in the room to actually stand up to Homelander and not be afraid of oh, him. Oh, yeah, he killed everyone else. just to torment those people. Doesn't that feel a little, little small? Left her traumatized. Doesn't matter what you do to me or the rest of the staff here. Your need for love is so deep. It's so human. You'll never be able to overcome that. And coincidentally enough, Barbara is the only scientist that yeah. is left living after Homelander leaves. But yeah, that just goes to show that Homelander only kills people that are genuinely afraid Leaks of him. Affection. And if you actually have the balls to stand yeah. up to Homelander and genuinely not be afraid, your chances of living are that much higher than, for example, trying to fight your way out. I don't know. I think it's a cool detail. He doesn't want to accept that he has, like, emotions like humans or... Or something like that. Hey, Cosgrove? How come you never got married? Because I like meat too much. You could be married and still eat a lot of meat. <laughs> I didn't know that. What? Married and still. <laughs> what an idiot. How can you be that dumb? People think it's the sandwich. The sandwich? I don't get it. Because he likes meat. Oh, yeah, meat in a sandwich. What? I'm confused. I am not accepting that, doctor. <laughs> no, doctor, this sent from the Diddy party is crazy. Diddy party is crazy. Alien X uh, versus Predator. This Fortnite player was ahead of its time. Limited by Dr. Cheats on Wife with Minor. Oh, wow. Wait, maybe the player knew. That'd be insane. Like before the thing. Sunglasses. All right, bro. That's an overkill, but I... I mean, fuck mosquitoes, bro. So annoying. Oh, <laughs> custom mosquitoes. Yeah. How, su how sweet! A new video from my favorite YouTuber! Thank you all so much for 1 million subscribers! Now that I've established myself as one of your favorite creators, it's time to let you all know that I'm actually a narcissistic piece of sh Wait, what? Not only have I been the mastermind behind three separate crypto scams, I also oh, embezzled shit. all of the money I said I was gonna donate to charity. Oh no. Oh yes. Why? And do you wanna know what else? Please don't say anything that has to do with kids. I love small ch 
Why is it every time? Yeah, I feel like uh, the worst people get famous. But I'm glad they get exposed. I guess. How hard does Patrick Starr work on his ass? Not only does hey, he try to bend the yo. wire every day, but he does it even when he's asleep. It's said his diamond ass is now harder than a diamond. It's time for the annual WrestleMania in Bikini Bottom. Wrestlers from all over the world have gathered. They're up against two super heavyweight champions, and the man who defeats them will win a million dollars in cash prizes. Krabs was instantly flustered. He tore of off course. his clothes and joined the competition. As the fight begins, the fighters can't wait to get in the ring. Krabs at the end of the line heard something. He stopped in his tracks. He realized that all the competitors in front of him had been defeated, and bad injured. Krabs blindfolded them and sent them to the ring. The unknowing pair thought they were in for a big surprise. Oh. The two strongest men angrily huffed and puffed at Spongebob. When they opened their eyes they realized they were strangers they'd never seen before. Krabs had lied to them and told them it was an act. They weren't scared when they heard the word play. That's when Spongebob realized Patrick Starr's ass could hold a soda. He practiced at home every day. Hey, this yo, ass is bro. really enviable. The two are back on stage again. With just one blow they embedded them in the ground. Then they grabbed them and threw one of them into a bucket of water. One operation is as fierce as a tiger. The two men have been knocked down. The men spit them out as mouthwash into the sewer. Krabs rushed to free them with a toilet plug. Because of their physique, they were unharmed and amused. Krabs was not happy with the way they looked. He demanded that they win this match as soon as possible. <laughs> Classic Krabs. Sensitive. Oh no, man. Don't feel bad. I have this. <laughs> What's that? Pornography. YouTube ads. Wait. Don't Me feel real. bad. What? I have this. <laughs> What's that? Pornography. I'm gonna guess, but there haven't been like literally pornos. Haven't seen that. But I. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Oh, With the 80th man. anniversary of D-Day having been a week or so ago, I was inspired to run around in the post-apocalypse as a World War II World Amer War is a World War II American GI, storming the beaches of Norman Boston and rebuilding the US from where it all began by setting up a Minuteman fighting force once more. We'll be playing on very hard difficulty without companions. Our loadout will be limited to wearing a standard issue military uniform, the rifle that won the war, the M1 Garand, because who doesn't just love hearing this? And the most American weapon ever since World War I, the Colt 1911, as a sidearm. When starting the game, I jacked our guy up to peak male physique and named our patriot Joe Freedom. Yo Freedom. Your Freedom. Nah, whatever. I never claim to be creative. We when on leave after D-Day, spicy cool. bombs were dropped all over the place that ended in the world getting Armageddon. But I made it into the local ice cream factory's basement. But I fell into a fridge where I was frozen in ice like some other wannabe. Here I watched my wife get murdered, but I didn't really care. I was married to Lady Liberty and was fully focused on getting her back in shape again. My son was also stolen, so getting him back would be a secondary objective. Maybe after I re-established the glory of America. Arriving outside, I came across my sweet gear of an M1 Garand and a 1911. 
I only had a tiny amount of ammunition, so my immediate order of business was to find some shops to buy 308 ammo for the M1 and .45 ammo for the 1911. On the way, however, I decided to start clearing out the wasteland a bit, first by killing off some mole rats, and second by bandside charging two blood bugs that were feasting on a Brahmin's corpse. This sure was a strange new world we found ourselves in. When I arrived in Concord, I domed one raider, followed by me butt-stalking a second one to death. Unfortunately, I didn't have nearly enough ammo to help out the Minutemen trapped here, so I had to abandon my comrades for the time being. Moving on, I arrived at Drumlin Diner. I didn't want to take any chances with Wolfgang and Simone, so I took the M1 and picked them off at a distance. I yeah, definitely needed to upgrade the sights though, because... God, I suck without a scope. Here, I got my hands on a very respectable amount of .45 ammo, plus some more from Carla later. With a decent amount of pistol ammo, I returned back to Concord to help out the Minutemen upstairs. I definitely need to be careful. Uh, he's using like modded weapons. And normally you do way less damage. Although, because sexy Joe here didn't yet have a uniform to protect his juicy muscles. Oh my god, it's so juicy! Heading Why upstairs, I domed one raider, while the second one ran for cover. Here, I came up with the genius idea to shoot the exploding right next to him, which made him unable to hold anything ever again. I honestly didn't expect that to work, so that made me feel very cool. After offing, the remaining raiders... I, I mean, he could at least put civilian clothes on. Like, bro, his butt ass naked. Put a point to the basher to make my bonsai charges more effective. And was for once a nice, respectable man in conversation. Which fought against my every instinct in this game, and I didn't like it. Because the quest demanded it, I entered the power armor and leapt off the building to immediately abandon it. A 1944 GI is above using things like power armor. All he needs is his trusty standard issue loadout, damn it! Not cheating, walking tank suits! After maneuvering through some alleys, I closed the distance to some raiders and proceeded to off them both. The second one exploding in slow motion in vats. How traumatizing. As if the mole rats and blood bugs weren't weird enough already, an oversized salamander crawled up. Honestly, I like power armors, but I mostly don't use them because they're kind of pain in the ass you gotta fix them you gotta like model them and shit then you need a uh, power core as well out of the sewers but after shooting almost every single bullet I had it too fell before me Preston was rightfully amazed at the World War 2 chat taking out the lizard in his underwear that was a pretty but it does give you a lot of armor so when, I mean, it's probably good to use when you're in a very shitty situation. But always wearing power armor is probably a no-go. Amazing display. I'm just glad you're on our side. After this, I upgraded the sights of the M1 by cutting the sight ring in half and adding glow dots on it. Unfortunately, my PTSD was rearing its ugly head here. Joe knew what was coming when he talked to... Defensive build. Huh? Preston. Anyway. Like power arm is a defensive build? I guess. I am glad you're here. And I hope you don't mind. I've had word from a settlement asking oh. for help. No! He always But for once, for he was right. We had to rebuild the Minutemen to rebuild the Mer- Oh, skills that make you less damage. Yeah, that's true as well. True, true, true. Erica. But first, after leveling Gunnut and upgrading my 1911, I went off to try and get my outfit sorted out. So I went to a nearby APC, where I got a helmet. Yeah. On the way to there Boston shopping get centers back. to get my clothes, yeah. I offered to retrieve a locket from raiders for a local settlement. In return get for conscription. Back. I also ran across a den of mole rats. So not wanting to waste ammunition, I put the basher perk to good use and Bansai charged the hell out of the little family, stringing him to my bayonet. On my way to Bunker Hill, I demonstrated excellent marksmanship and domed two raiders in quick succession. Now if only I could do that more often. 
when I arrived at Bunker Hill, they didn't sell me a uniform. Disappointed. At least ammo is hard to find. So, after marking the railroad Anchor. along the way and killing a few raiders that were anything but polite, I made my way over to Good Neighbor to try my luck. I mean, yeah. You could hack the uh, robots and shit. Yeah, that is useful. But there. After entering the town, I killed Finn immediately. For science, just to see whether Hancock's dialogue would be any different. Yeah, <laughs> science. Oh, I like you already. Nope, he still has a hard on for me making a show of dominance on the first person I saw. Realize, yeah. Experiment for next time, kill someone else at random. After this, I stocked up on ammo, but again, no uniform. Disappointed! After this, I added glow sights and black it, paint man. to the 1911 and went to a settlement quest in a I military a installation. I figured that surely there'd be plenty of uniforms for me to take there. Yeah. First, I took care of some mole rats on the outskirts. But then, I saw my very life flash before my eyes as a mole rat tried to Allahu Akbar. Okay, bro. Bro, bro gotta get cancelled. That's not a real thing. That's a uh, that's a mod. I've never seen a mole rat with uh, bombs. That's a mod. Me, but I killed it just in time to not get exploded. Phew! Okay. Making my way to the inside, I killed one raider from stealth, only to turn around and dome a second one shortly after. Somehow, still remaining in stealth. As I crept around, I turned another raider into confetti. After which, the battle was met. Four raiders against little old naked me. <laughs> they didn't stand a chance. I domed the first two raiders, after which a crit took care of Akak and her minigun, while the final two bullets lodged themselves firmly into the last raider's skull. Glorious. Following this, I retrieved the quest locket and grabbed the key to enter a military room, where there was still no uniform. Sick of running around half-naked, I decided to go to what? Diamond City's clothes shop. Still none. I took a western route towards it, so I could mark Fort Hagen for a later quest. Arriving at Diamond City's front gate, Piper didn't seem the least bit worried by the weird naked man creeping up behind her. Anyways, once inside, I ran into the clothes shop and finally found a uniform. Uh, the, um... Vault City mascot. Now, or no, just vault mask up. Now, at last, yeah. I looked like a proper soldier. Yeah! <laughs> the next order of business was to get ballistic weave to be able to survive being shot. So once more, I was forced into the loving arms of the railroad hippies. Must not shoot hippies. Resist. <laughs> I made my way to Lexington Bro, and met up with Deacon to retrieve a yeah. McMuffin. When meeting I with Ricky the railroad agent, board. I didn't give him the correct code phrase, after which Deacon did give him the correct one. But funnily enough, he still claimed that I was showing him the ropes. Very convincing stuff there. Taking the back entrance into the old railroad HQ, I stealthily offed one synth. After which, I took the M1 to methodically take care of a whole cluster of the things. With the high ground on my bro. side, I first domed Sense one on synth, top. followed by me shooting the legs off of another. The With its team. leg blown off, I tried the same trick on the third one, until I grabbed the 1911 and quickly unloaded it on the final one. I guess that makes sense why he joined on the railroad. After this, I dropped off a ledge, where there were three more sins. I almost got myself killed here due to my dog shit aim, but Fats totally saved my ass here. Plus, the pipe made them come in one by one, which was very helpful as well. With all of them taken out of commission, we arrived at the main room, where Deacon was trying his damnedest to cock block my shots. Nevertheless, the nah, M1 proved its worth once more, and we promptly cleared the place out. While making our way through the final part of the complex, we encountered, you guessed it, more sins! Man, I just love it when their heads just fall off like that. 
Anyways, we arrived at the McMuffin room and after destroying the three synths guarding it, we opened the door and looted everything that wasn't bolted down. Yes. While in Lexington, I took the liberty to take out a local raider gang to conscript another settlement to the Minutemen. So I entered the Corp Vega assembly plant. Right. Inside, there were a lot more raiders than I remembered. And with my lack of armor, I had to be very afraid of rapid fire weapons and shotguns. Luckily, I had vats and a bayonet. When I arrived at the boss room, the boss was just sitting there, staring. Yeah, vats feels like you're cheating. It helps you a lot. At me. Or perhaps he was just incredibly high at that point. In the end, he was still dead. Especially the same. Him. After taking care of the remaining raiders and the reinforcements, it meant that we had another settlement under our belt. With Don't this, worry. I was promoted to Supreme right Commander of the Minutemen and was That's given yet another back. settlement Same recruitment quest. But before anything else, I gave Mama Murphy some cams where she gave me a different cheat code than last time and went on to do a few annoying railroad missions where I had to escort a synth and ascertain the status of a railroad base. When I arrived, I was beset by a horde of feral ghouls which dropped before the might of the 1911. With them taken out, I headed to the front door, where this time I was also beset by a swarm of insects. You know, usually I can't hit a bloatfly to save my life, but this time I took them out like one, two, three, four. Damn. Inside, the raiders Good didn't aim. fare very well. One of them, I shoved my bayonet so far down his gob that his entire head exploded. With this floor taken out, I proceeded further down, where the increased zoom of the Garand came in very handy. With most of the raiders gone, I retrieved the safe house report, killed a crazed stabby maniac, and threw myself off a ledge into a deathclaw den, into which one horribly unfortunate raider also fell, reminding me of Jabba's palace. Having learned to cheese this segment from the last run I did, I stood in between some debris where the thing couldn't get to me, resulting in it dying while yeah, being powerless to do. stop me. You cheese it. After this, I upgraded the Garand, removed the zoom effect, and added the suppressor to the 1911. Having done this, I went to the railroad, where Carrington already oh, knew the status of the safe house I was supposed to reconnoiter, before I reported to him about it, making me think that he sent me off to die. I'll be sure to remember this in the future. Oh wait. Nevertheless, after placing two turrets in the settlement for Pam, hmm. I was given the glorious quest to unlock Ballistic Weave. So, wasting no time, I ran off to get it immediately. Where there was no one in sight to stop me. Okay, well, that was easy. Salivating at the prospect of ballistic weave, I went to Sanctuary to upgrade my clothes and yes! Yes! survivability at last. With this new armor, I could finally get things oh, done. So I decided to go to Grey Garden to recruit the robots there to bolster the Minutemen's forces. They wanted me to activate the local water treatment plant for their farm, but the surface was infested with super mutants. Luckily, I now had my new and improved armor, which definitely saved my life here more than once already during this first encounter with them. One of them I sniped from afar, but then I started hearing a spooky little noise. I was being rushed down by a mini nuke carrying yeah. maniac who lit up like the sky on the 4th of July. A dog came in as well, alongside a scrub with a plank of wood. With this wave of them taken out, all that remained was just some mop-up of the stragglers. With the super mutants taken care of, I went inside and activated the first of many pumps. This place was a mess, and infested with mylers. Taking them out, I flipped on a bunch more pumps, which in turn woke up even more mylers for me to exterminate. Taking care of all of that, I made my way back to Grey Garden. The robots there agreed to share some of their produce with us, which I naturally took for them joining the Minutemen's armed forces. I found out what those robots in Grey Garden needed and took care of it. Even better, they want to be Minutemen. Huh. I guess I never thought of robots. Yeah. 
Preston got very hard about the Minutemen growing and suggested that we retake the castle, an old fort revamped in the mid 19th century. We met up in a diner not too far from it, where it was decided that, in true Normandy fashion, we'd frontally storm the sands of the courtyard. As was to be expected, this wasn't entirely without casualties. But you know what they say, the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time without the lot of patriot- the castle might be my favorite base to have. And crabs. Mm. It's a cool location. With the courtyard secured, we started smashing apart the unborn offspring of the crabs, where... Big Mama wasn't very happy with us killing off her babies. Uh, I'd like to say this was ball-bustingly hard, but I just kept my distance and kept side-strafing her to dodge her toxic spew. I continued doing this while pumping her full of lead until she just stopped moving. And like that, we had taken a respectable HQ to legitimize our operation. Preston was really chuffed about this. Yet he couldn't help himself and just had to sour the mood with his own personal way of saying goodbye. Which reminds me, I've got another trouble spot for you to check out. <laughs> and that would keep on forever. With the Minutemen getting firmly entrenched in northern Boston, it was time to start moving towards picking a fight with organizations like the Institute, so we could declare an independent Boston. To do this, we had to find the guy who killed Lady Not Liberty, so we tracked down a detective to an old subway station. Inside, I offed two guys that were just having a lovely chat with each other before blowing a guy in the bathroom. Away. The M1 Garante absolutely came into its element here. Fun fact, Jean Le Baptiste Garante was a French Canadian from Quebec who migrated to the US. Here, he was tasked by Springfield Are Army to design a semi-automatic rifle, which he completed just in time to start production in 19... I feel like Enclave has better equipment, though. But, uh, yeah, Enclave is... They're kind of cuckoo in the head. 40, right in time for World War II. With that bit of gun nutting out of the way, I slaughtered my way through the Triggerman by simply clicking on their heads, yeah. many of which exploded like an overly ripe melon. Their Thompsons weren't very effective at this range. Arriving at the vault door, I off the guards guarding the door before opening it and entering the vault. Inside, I killed one Triggerman before wildly shooting in the general direction of the second. It was dark, okay? I couldn't see his head. Moving on, I used a not quiet at all oh, Garant. Okay, I'll stop now. The first of one trigger. I didn't. And then a second one, where nobody gave a singular fuck about the loud as sin shots echoing through this confined space. After this, I grabbed the 1911 to remain undetected with its suppressor. Too bad my aim sucked the fat one, resulting in the Triggerman shooting back. How rude. Arriving at the center of the vault, I domed Dino, who survived with only a slither of health left. Yeah, they are fun. No matter though, he too will bow before the Grand. Freeing Detective Nick, we went on a rampage through the vault. We first ambushed one guy, before getting two juicy headshots in a row on a moving target. Oh my god, it's so juicy! After that, I just said, fuck it! And bum rushed the last guy, stabbing yeah, him too, with yeah. my little sword, and giving him a free lobotomy right after. Grabbing the 1911 for CQB in the tight fold corridors, we made our way towards the exit. No head would remain unmolested during this section. <laughs> when we got to the mob boss, we remembered Mama sucks. Murphy's cheat code. She's dead, by the way. Skin. And ran the line past Skinny. The After which, okay. we were you free to go. go. Mama Murphy has done it again. Yay. After we exited the vault, we went to the detective agency to talk about my now ex-wife's killer. So we could find... The Institute. After identifying the killer as Kellogg, we went to his house, but the lock was too hard. So I went to get no the key. Fucking life. All right. Then get a life, bro.
Knifing at the receptionist, I was too shit to- It's one of the valid games where there is multiplayer that suck as and don't work the right way. Yeah. Uh, Fallout 76, I think. Yeah, it's dog shit. The reason you didn't join the stream today was because you watched 25 episode of this one show. What's the show, man? But that's insane, though. Your whole day just... Yeah, uh, bro. You might as well remove that, see yeah, true. Pass an easy speech check for Piper, and a medium speech check for the receptionist, where I gave her a perfectly reasonable explanation for needing the key. It's about the sh What? Oh, that ain't sus at all. After this, I hail Mary to heart speech check, where I told her to just trust me, bro. Which succeeded. Sure. Going back to Kellogg's house, I saw Nick wasting a cigarette. As is tradition, I left nothing ungrabbed inside, like the true kleptomaniac I was. <laughs> yeah, He's back. I can vouch. Oh my god. After this, I was off to Fort Hagen to confront Kellogg. Once inside, the M1 did horrible things to the synths present there. With me upgrading the rifleman's skill throughout the playthrough, the M1 pierced through a decent amount of the synths armor. It also helped that my aim was pretty much on point here, so headshots galore! After clearing the first floor, with only one synth giving me at least a tiny bit of trouble, We went to the basement. Here I had a bit more difficulty with the Free synths than upstairs. Nice. But in the end, Bug even burger. these synths would yield to the might of the Grand. Moving through the tight corridors of the Same basement, building. I dealt with many a more synths and turrets. But in the end, they too would not stop my advance towards my goal of questioning Kellogg. Once I arrived in the boss room, Kellogg wasn't feeling very cooperative, so we started the tussle. I immediately inhaled all the combat steams I could get my mitts on and unloaded on Kellogg. Unfortunately, he entered stealth, so I offed his friends instead. After a while, I managed to corner him, but wildly firing in his general direction wasn't very effective. So I bonsai charged him and used him for bayonet practice. After stabbing him for a dozen or so times, he finally fell before me. After which I surgically opened his skull to take a piece of brain for later. Well, there went our only huh? lead. Better get outside then. Ow. Oh, that's a problem. Another tyrannical group that stabbed. Cola, you can go to the special shops up things and we get two colas there's one guy on discord who gives free colas when you complete his challenge get the 300 inventory now you can carry 200 more items my <laughs> pepsi better i mean fa facts he's not talking about in real life uh cola though but yeah. Dance in the way of liberty, equality, and justice for all. We'll deal with them in due time. When I returned to Nick, we decided to go to the memory den to analyze the brain pit I took with me. So, as is tradition, I ignored everything in the memory sequence until the very last unskippable bit. Here, we found out that the Institute uses teleportation to get in and out, and doesn't have a front door to enter. We also found out that we had to find some dude in a big old crater because he casually knew how to make a teleporter. At this point, I remembered that I still needed to take care of the railroad for being dicks and that analyzing a special chip later would go m Okay, W. Uh, what is Kofola? Is this Slovakian cola? Much quicker if I just off them all I'm right guessing. here, right now. But that's a side bonus. The real reason was still vengeance against these hippies for sending me to do a whole bunch of fetch quests before fine. I'll check and slow up. Alright.
there. Finally giving me that ballistic weave I was after. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty tough, especially Glory, whom I bayoneted to death for the final blow. But in the end, I was victorious, uh, no. where the final one to fall before me was Dr. Carrington, who sent me to that safe house for no goddamn reason, who got butt stopped to death. How poetic. He could see the entire organization burn. Beautiful. With that, the hippies were history. And I made my way okay. to the glowing sea, sure where did. there were rat scorpions everywhere. Again! Since rat scorpions seem to thrive the most in these radioactive zones, I can only conclude that of all the mutated critters running around out there, the rat scorpions are the superiorly adapted species. With biology hypothesizing over, I'm I arrived at the crater, Virgil. where, after getting the location of yes, science, dude, I put an end to these children of the cathedral remnant. Mm. Your religion is a lie, the unity is fake, your god has been The worst game ever made, yeah, definitely not playing that then. Dead for over 120 years, be gone you filthy savages. Ah, that's always cathartic to do. At Virgil's cave, there's always a death claw camping the entrance. But I've grown quite significantly in level since our last encounter with one, so it fell before me without a second thought. Inside the cave, I met with Virgil, where something hit me. Why does he wear those glasses? They're completely useless. Like, there's almost no glass Wait, left yeah, at true. all. yeah, true. Yeah, whatever. He told me I needed Wait, to... I always thought he... That wasn't a broken glasses. Kill a coarser super synth to get Here a you chip. Out. Okay. Apparently, I need that chip. You need that chip. We need that chip. That couldn't have been a coincidence, right? But while dumping some crap off at Sanctuary, Preston approached me to handle a situation at the castle. Here, a cranky old lady told me to open a weapons cache in the castle. So we went down into the basement, where I was amazed that I didn't set off a single mine while I was down there. After dodging the minefield, we encountered the sentry bot Sarge. I first blew off one of its arms to cut its firepower in half, while Ronnie voluntarily drew the thing's fire. After that, I just shot it a whole bunch and Sam's your uncle. Making our way through, we discovered a 40-year-old corpse of a guy there. And I gotta say, that corpse is in a remarkable state of non-decay for being 40 years old. Anywho, when we exited the basement, I grabbed the mortar schematics and built one of them. After nah. which I sat through a mandatory test fire. Now, the time Mer has come. To get the Courser's chip. So off the green tech genetics I went. <laughs> oh, please help me. Come on. Hey, mm -hmm. ah. Fuck. Inside the courser was already coded right, down yeah. on the gunners there. So I decided to bully him even harder and started going on a little rampage of my own. These wannabe soldiers LARPing as the military would not stand in the way of the United States being reborn anew. When I arrived at the rocket launcher section, I got blown up since the rocketeer managed to squeeze a rocket through a very tight opening. Good aim. The second time around, I crit him in the face when that accursed railing got in my way again, as per usual. Moving further upstairs, there were even more gunners to take out, though some rapid fire shots took care of them before I got myself minced by them. When I arrived at the boss room, I wanted to try something I saw on the video, and went around the left side of the room. I took the password Aww. to open the door where the trapped synth was, after which the courser politely thanked me, and shut down that Thank synth. You. Now, <coughs> if you could just give me a moment. K198. Recall code. I'm begging Stratus. you to do this. Just like with Kellogg, the courser annoyingly turned invisible. But he wasn't as clever as Kellogg, because the courser refused to leave the exact same spot where he took cover. Which resulted in me being able to keep shooting at the exact same spot without Idiota. actually seeing what I was shooting at. Rinse and repeat this a few times and the courser oh, wow. went down. 
With the Corsa chip in hand, I decoded the chip myself invisible? and Invisible? Yeah, it is. We can be invisible like them. Um, don't remember what it was called. But yeah, you can. Turn to virtual. He is it good? Uh... No, I don't think so. I mean, if you need to escape, then I guess it's good. It doesn't... I don't think it lasts as much. It's like 10 seconds or something. I was curious as to how I got it decoded. So I answered that it was the railroad that uh, helped me. In a manner of speaking, at least. After that, he gave me the teleporter schematics. So I went to Preston for help. Who wasn't too keen on me messing with the Institute. But he sent me to Sturgis for help anyways. When we activated the blessed thing, a decorative piece of tubing started flailing around like a wacky flaily inflatable tube man. Just like with the railroad. Is the Brotherhood the only one who can build the thing competently? Once inside the Institute... Hey, yo, what? I didn't much care for them immediately performing an experiment on me. But like a decent American citizen, I handed them a formal declaration of war before peacefully departing. In the dead of night, I awoke Preston and said, Oh, by the way, we're now at war with the Institute you weren't fond of me messing with. That cool. And Preston was like, yeah, sure, cool, whatever. Okay, then. To attack the Institute, I had to recruit some more settlements. But I stumbled across the Roswell incident in the meantime. Following the green goop to a cave, I found something otherworldly. And immediately hey, shot it, because I didn't understand what I was looking at. Following this, the British, um, I mean the Institute, attempted to root out our little insurrection. In response, I placed down a few turrets in the courtyard, which, due to my level, shot explosive ammunition. So I figured we'd have no problem taking care of whatever came our way. In a sense, these turrets were enough. But also not entirely. The normal sins would get absolutely shredded Earth apart when it hurts. Uh, there's like some turrets you need to like power with a generator. But the turrets he has, uh, they don't need generators to power them. Everybody got in firing range. But the coursers were engaged in almost perpetual stealth. Which meant that the turrets wouldn't shoot at them, resulting in the turrets getting... And if I'm not... I'm not... If that's right, but, uh... You have to manually, uh... Shoot the turrets. Explosive ones? Yeah, there are, like, rocket ones. Destroyed. Yeah. This now. meant that I had to do most of the heavy Your lifting. First taking care of any normal sin stragglers before dealing with the coursers. I'm not gonna lie, this was a tough one. I was forced to use the hell out of fats and cams and whatnot. The big MVP here were Meyer Lurk Egg Omelettes since they refilled about 40% of my AP per oh, use, yeah. which, to my knowledge, is the only cookable food item that does that. Definitely something to keep in mind in the future. I guess. After the grueling battle concluded, the remaining synths retreated sure and were do, gunned bro. down like dogs. After a quick celebration, we were ready to attack the Institute hey, yo, what itself. The fuck? We'd found a way in oh, via more, an old water pipe, so I had to get in there and make my way to the teleporter room so that the other Minutemen could also enter the Institute. I guess they all couldn't swim then, so I had to go and do it all on my own. After taking care of a whole heap of nasties in the sewers of the Institute, which mostly consisted of feral ghouls including a glowing one, I crawled out of the sludge pipe like Andy Dufresne and made my way to the teleporter room. Here, Preston gave me a big old bomb to strap to the Institute's reactor. But to get there, we first had to make our way through the old robotics section of the Institute, where I felt like the Institute's synths had gotten an upgrade because they felt very dodgy and also a bit more durable than I remembered them being. And you bet my favorite skill is for ra 
Range guns only. Um. No. What is my favorite skill? My favorite skill is cannibalism. Free food, free health. And if you were wondering whether I was still I mean, yeah. using the bayonet, right. yes, yes I was. With all the robotics cleared, we made our way to the institute proper. In the main lobby, I had a little trouble dealing with the synths there, since these Minutemen backup I brought with me weren't very well equipped with them wearing farm clothes and all. Definitely something we needed to improve later, once we're done here. After pistoling a bunch of them, followed by me taking a few pot shots at the rest of them, we cleared the lobby. After which I said hello to father, opened I'm up a route to the reactor, reactor. Yeah, and issued an evacuation order to Time. let the rest of the scientists evacuate. Ugh, We're yellow. honorable like that. When we arrived in the reactor room, we had extreme difficulty punching our way through, since the synths here were tossing plasma grenades and had an asshole with a rocket launcher. Nice After asshole. several attempts of me dying and making very good use of a few combat camps, I was eventually successful and planting the bomb on their reactor. After this, I left behind some shit synth that wasn't mine and teleported out of the institute. Arriving outside, I punched that glorious red button and put an end to this threat to our rebuilding of the United America. States. Now there was still one more loose end to tie up. The Brotherhood of Steel. So, after honorably giving them our declaration of war, we chucked a bunch of artillery shells towards their blimp and watched it go down in a glorious ball of fire and smoke. The Brotherhood wasn't very happy about this though and sent a bunch of vertebrates our way. Luckily, I was prepared and had placed explosive ammo turrets on every outside corner of the Star Fortress. I expected the Brotherhood to put up a much harder fight than the Institute had, with them having power armor and all, but it just made them a larger target for the explosive ammo of the turrets. Plus, they didn't really have stealth boys to boot. So in the end, I really didn't have to do much but watch the carnage unfold and shoot wildly into the air to pretend to the other Minutemen that I was doing something useful. With the tyrannical brotherhood yeah, taken out as well, there would be nothing that could stand in the way of us consolidating power in Boston, from which we could reconquer the rest of America. I had a lot of fun playing through this campaign. The weapons were very well made by the mod author and well balanced as well. I can definitely recommend you trying them out for yourself. On PC you can find them in the in-game mod list, so take them out for a spin whenever you get the chance. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time. Alright, that was kind of interesting. Um, I don't think I ever got Minutemen ending. With the 80th anniversary of D-Day having been a week- oh, that's the same link. My bad. Oh wait, this is... Okay, there we go. I think the Russians are starting to learn that they probably should not trust North Korean weapons. And I say that because of new photos that have been circulating, which right here, it doesn't really look like much, but essentially, this is artillery. And according to reports, at least what we're so reading silent. online, is that the team here had this out. They took out a shell from North Korea <laughs> They loaded it yeah, into it this machine, and as the pin came back to go, it just went boom in place. And that's the best description. Imagine I buying now. North Korean like weaponry and shells and shit. Shot in his screws. Yeah, imagine, bro. Full e rape. No. Nah. Korean weapons work. The caption of this photo says this. This is how, at times, 
the ammunition supplied from North Korea to Russia works magic on Russian artillery. In the comments. Wait, said, North Korea is uh, low key helping Ukraine with that. Action has me laughing because one of them says we're here with friends like that. You don't need enemies, and that's true. The kicker in all of this, though, we've been reading reports online that state that the Russian military has stopped checking the ammunition that's coming from North Korea. Usually, Truth they would as well. get it, check and make sure that it actually is done. Right. That's kind of dumb. North Korea doesn't really have that many people to just spare. Right, and then send it out. <clears throat> but because it was slowing down all of the shipments, the Russian government supposedly said, don't do that, just bring it to the front lines. Dude, I would promote the underage sale of tobacco or nicotine products to anybody. Okay, President IDK Sterling, I can't tell no. if you're an op or if you're an ally. Oh. But we're not off to a good start here in my second speech because I never said that I would promote that at all, dude. You literally took it out of context and spliced it together. Now, with that being said, this is the... Imagine how the troops feel like, oh my god, just like home but with food and more freedom. I guess. The official account of the president of the Republic of IDK Sterling, which is a brand new lore drop I was not prepared for. Apparently, a portion of the United States, specifically the western portion, has seceded to become the Republic of IDK Sterling, meaning we are now neighbors with United States, Mexico, and What? Canada. We also got a ton of lore here with these different provinces. We got the North Saint County, South Saint County, Guy Atlantis, Sterling Valley, the Money Pit, the Isle of Santa, we got everything in here. Even my Fortnite duo got his own province here, New Chase. That's pretty sick. I'm really curious what? to see what I'm going to be saying in my third presidential speech, Fortnite? though. This is really going to determine whether or not this account is nah, up or bro. out. We'll see. Bo blame Fortnite? Hell no. Sensitive. No, bro, what? That's crazy. BDSM. How's that sensitive? Oh, oh my god. Let's uh, test out this right here. Stick this in there. So resilient. Let's try the micro USB. Oh my gosh, what was that? Oh, oh wow. I'll oh. start with an iPhone. So if I remember correctly, the actual uh, display controller should be down here somewhere. Ooh, alright. Oh, oh, wow. It went green. Okay. Something just happened. Here we go. What have you got for us? No kill. Wow. Okay, so something really strange has just happened. I shot the Nokia and some sort of static went into my mic and it stopped recording. What? Nah, bro's capping. Nokia died, he switched to a Nokia. Fuck you mean it just stopped recording. Nah, that's cap. That's cap. Another sensitive. That's the same one. It's so simple. I, I'm not following you. Cool. Bro, what? Nah. No kill makes tanks. Okay. You need to check something. So we know we. Okay. No, 
to check chemicals, Link. I... We got a pedophile on the loose and we got to trap it. I ain't even going to stunt. One of you motherfuckers going to have to lure Drake into this fucking trap on Mystery Gang. But who are we going to dress up like a little girl Fred? Velma's built like two fat bitches and Daphne looks too grown for Drake. We should put Scooby in a dress and little Red Hood, we could make something work. Shaggy, you genius. We'll make Scooby an Instagram. Then message P. Drizzy to meet him here when Scooby refuses to party with Champagne Why Poppy. Scooby? We'll have him run in this shed. We'll close the door and lift him out through the top with the basket. What if he catches Scooby before he makes it in the shed? He just got new BBL superpowers? I don't know if we're even ready to handle such a monster Big Freddy. Fuck what you talking about, Daphne. Scooby, do you think you can handle BBL Drizzy? Ooh. Anybody got a perk 30? Fuck it, I'll do it for the gang with that perk power. No, Shaggy, we really need Scooby on this one. I think it's time to get him neutered. Roll, 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 roll. <laughs> nah, imagine if that was real. <laughs> imagine if that was real. Oh, duh. No love to the five, so I step it up to six. That might save my life. Alright, if I ever... Oh, go to America. Crips are a street gang that form in Los Angeles. 1969. What a year, though. Well, well, well. Okay, bro. The Crips grew quickly and overpowered smaller gangs across LA. You choose the bloods. Okay. I mean, the color looks better. Yeah, cause it's red, but yeah, I ain't too, I, I ain't no one, I ain't no one side. I'm neutral. Three to combat the Crips, the smaller gangs came together and formed the Bloods in 1972. Oh, that's interesting. The side of humanity. Since then, the Crips and Bloods have had a bit of rivalry over the control of Los Angeles. The Crips and Bloods expanded outside of Los Angeles and have a presence across many U.S. states. Both gangs are involved in uh, criminal activities such as robbery, drug trafficking, and uh, even murder, of course. You're watching knowledge. However, both gangs also engage in community activities and provide protection to residents. That's good, I guess. What? Global figures in hip hop are associated with the Crips and Blood, such as Snoop Dogg. Well, with the Hang on, Snoop Dogg. Gangsta lore. There have been several truces between the Crips and Bloods, but they're all failed to make peace. Mm. <laughs> to become a Crip or Blood, candidates need to prove themselves by committing a serious crime first. That's crazy, though. Crime is bad, bro. Ass fucked. Damn it, choose your name. Wait, which version did I grow up with? Hold on. I feel like both of those two and three. Maybe four as well. I've 
I've seen that one too. Probably that one too, and this one. Probably. And this one. No, I think I stopped watching Scooby Doo from here. I used to watch Scooby Doo a lot, but I don't know, stopped watching it. I think it kind of fell off. Uh, you bet Scooby? Okay. You grow with almost all? Yeah, I think so too, like most of them. Tom Failed and president yeah. assassination attempts. Bro, assassination? Oh wait, that was an axe. I thought that was a shoe f for some time. The time. Wait, for the whole time I thought it was a shoe. Wait, so those were two axes? There were two shots. I never really, really watched that. Ninjago, I watched it a little bit. That armor is crazy. Holy shit. Pups, while we're at it. Great. What? There was assassination attempt? Ghost eye music. Wait, how? Where was assassination there? What even happened? Snipe him, you think? Maybe, I don't know. You got panicked, yeah. 2,154 days ago. The final season. Oh, it's showing all the... Damn. 4,457 days ago. I almost said years ago. <laughs> that would make no sense. Telltale better than Walking Dead Moot. Yeah, I agree. This shit overrated. What? Telltale, Telltale games are so good. Yeah, take that back, bro. At least the uh, uh, early Telltale games. Man, brag. Oh, that's the same link. My bad. America has just been. Don't change almost nothing. Okay. <laughs> you can change something. Been told to basically fuck off by Turkey. Turkey has just started ignoring and they've started importing oil from Iran. In March, Based. Turkey imported over 576 tons of Iranian oil, and then the month after, in April, they imported another 500 tons. And it's not just Turkey doing this. In fact, loads of other European countries oh. have started ignoring U.S. sanctions, Damn. and they've also started buying the Iranian oil. New figures show that Bulgaria and Poland <laughs> were some of the European countries that started buying this Iranian oil. 
oil. And because of, of this, it means that Iran is quickly gaining power and influence over the Let's countries go. in Europe. Simply because these countries are oil. so dependent on oil and Iran sells it for so cheap. And in some months of this year, Iran's oil exports reached over 1.6 million barrels of oil per day. And this is up from less than 300,000 so per day yeah. in 2019, when US President Trump issued really tough sanctions onto Iran. Except this rise in oil exports is mainly due to Iran selling their oil to Asian countries like China, rather than European countries. It appears to me as if this is kind of like a spiral of more and more countries joining together hmm. against the US. Obviously the US can't sanction everybody, uh. and it seems the more and more countries that come together to ignore the US, the more likely it is that the US will do nothing. And so with such a big country like Turkey starting to buy oil from Iran, it seems very likely that more countries are going to follow in Turkey's footsteps. But for some more news like this, you can just- um. Don't I never said GTP. What? This boy's luck is too good. He just accidentally spilled ink on the paper, then simply wiped it off, instantly stunning the teacher. To top it off, his artwork unexpectedly won first place with the students cheering for him, leaving the boy utterly bewildered. Not only that, during exams, the boy selected answers by throwing dice, leaving it all to fate. Despite Bro, this, he still managed to achieve the top score in the entire <sighs> school, which left him feeling I'll extremely stop. surprised. In the next exam, the boy handed in a blank paper, only for the principal to praise him directly for being the only one to spot errors in the test questions, faced with such an extraordinary life. The, the boy fuck? was left speechless. The girls in his class even became his little fangirls. As the boy okay. grew older, his charmed life continued without pause. He could casually buy a lottery ticket and win the jackpot, effortlessly hail a taxi just by waving his hand. Why is he looking sad? I'll be happy as fuck. Bro, like what? and even become the lucky customer of a hot pot restaurant, enjoying a year oh, of free fuck. meals faced with such an extraordinary life. The man found it meaningless and decided to renounce the world and become a monk. However, upon hearing his story, the abbot displayed a look of envy. Yeah. The fuck? Fuck you sad for? You're living like a billionaire. This boy's luck is to oh, good. Oh, my bad. I need that luck, yeah. Sorry. After I said something, okay. Oh, Bring a mask. Next. Mino. That's in Estonian, uh, means mine. Huh. What are you wearing? You told me to come with a mask, right? So I came I with a mask. I guess it's mine. To protect- Pause. Yourself against COVID, not to rob the fucking bank. <laughs> what are you wearing? Alright. Huh? Well, I guess it's unavailable. That's the main... What? Back to back. What? Ew. No, did not mean. <laughs> Crazy pause. Um, he got doubled for some reason. <laughs> so Mr. Beast just released a video where he built a hundred homes, and while it is an amazing and wholesome video that you should definitely watch, it also yeah. just kind of made me depressed about housing in the U.S. <laughs> 
Hear me out. So fun fact, outside social media, I actually do work in housing, meaning that I know that this video would not have been possible to make in the US. See, in the video, Mr. Beast goes in, finds a family in need of a new shelter, and quite literally builds them a house right there. Not and while this works US. in countries like Jamaica, in the US, Mr. Beast would have been federally charged for this, no. because none of these houses would meet any building or zoning code found in the US. Not to mention, all these houses would require parking and streets for the parking. Building anything besides a big single family home in the US is genuinely really hard because of all the legalities. This kind of work is literally illegal in the country, and even though the US has so much money, we have to rely on someone called Mr. Beast to do this kind of work. And then you have the US's NIMBY, which stands for Not In My Backyard, which the US has a huge culture for. Because even if this kind of development was legal in the US, the Americans wouldn't want it in their backyard. Oh, wow. Yeah, America's cooked. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> nah. It's like chemical TikTok. <laughs> oh, you too. Uh, I guess you're alike. Same type of music. <laughs> What? I didn't play any wrong notes. Yeah, see, you're playing it like this. When ordinarily it goes like this. Follow three. Honestly, yeah. That song is a lot of um aura, you could say. I'm partially doing it in the key of A minor myself. They really fucked up in 76. Well, you can't play music oh. with a My bad. Are the minions impossible to kill? The minions are at least 65 million years old. Potentially they're as old as time, meaning they could have came into existence 3.8 billion years ago. Yes, that's their actual age, oh, because wow. minions can't reproduce. So these have been the same minions all this time, and they've been through everything, and yet have still come out unscathed. They so are they forever. immortal? Well, we've seen the minions take a lot of pain. Herb had them strapped up and stretched out their bodies. They wouldn't tear apart, they were just stretchy. And Kevin I even was swallowed like a that. rocket and survived. Yeah, that's Not crazy. only did he survive, but he wasn't even harmed. And if we look at Bob when he's training Kung Fu, we find out that his head can take infinity damage. He had a safe Damn. dropped on his head from the sky, and it fell right through his head Bro, as if it was nothing. So I haven't watched Minions for a while. I know there's like more like movies and shit i should probably watch them since the minions have not died since the beginning of time does that equal them being immortal well it has been said that they're biologically immortal but one. they can be killed from being too much of an idiot wait what they can be killed it has been said that they're biologically immortal but they can be killed from being too much of an idiot oh like they can live forever but they can get killed it's possible. I don't want to set the world on fire. Okay. I just want to Are you singing now? With your body split in half? A flame in you You got the voice of an angel. I'm freaking out right now. And this is a really beautiful in song. My but when you sing. Heart, I have but one. Hey, I'm scared. Stop it. Just die. Please. Well, again, yeah. That one you just said I don't want to set the world on fire. But no you said earlier that you were going to cut off the heads of all the mutants in the wasteland, including me. That's right. Only mutants. You're a mutant, too. No, I am a human. 
And you are mutey bastard. Way down inside oh my of god! Me. I'm oh gonna take off my helmet and shoot you in the head only right one now! I don't... Baby Jalen falling down a flight of stairs because the mother went to Puerto Rico for 10 days while she left her six month old behind to fend for herself with. No, nah, that's fucked up. You left it at scream? Bro, who just leaves their baby? Like, what? No food or water. No food and water. Trashy parenting. Call, call it what it is. It is what it is. That kid could literally die. That is neglectful parenting at its finest. Yeah. Children deserve to have safe and responsive and nurturing environments. And if you can't provide that, why are you having a child? True. This baby, literally at six months old, tumbled down a flight of stairs in their jumper, going in two full circles down that flight of stairs. Oh, mom, and yeah. their bodies aren't even fully developed. They are literally actively developing their bones, their immune system, everything. This baby had no chance being left alone. I hope this woman gets the maximum sentence. Yeah. R.I.P. baby Jalen. Wait, he died? Oh. R.I.P. My opinion is because now women can work for to work to make money. Well, our P man. That's I horrible. disagree because. Like that. Oh, fuck you. The fuck you say to me, you little shit? <laughs> how are you? How are you not in fucking school? You kiss your mother with that mouth? It's called you. Ki it's called you kiss your mother with that fucking mouth, huh? Oh my huh? God, why are you so angry? <laughs> because the fucking youth of society. You shut up when I'm talking to you. You shut your mouth. Classic. They put brass knuckles in their hands. Oh, oh, oh. Ar, 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 ar. This is something that very few people will ever do, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is your first time seeing something like what? this. In this TikTok video that I was tagged in, we can see these two people, and their hands have some sort of implant. It kind of looks like brass knuckles. This person then proceeds to poke and play around with the implants below their skin. And these have seen a surge of popularity over the past several years. They're known as transdermal body mod implants. These implants are typically going to be made out of silicone. The artist is going to mold it, open up your skin, and place it inside. Why? People don't just get these implants on their hands, though. A lot of people that you're going to see who are really intensely into body mods are going to use them to create things like horns on their head. Here's another example of a little bit more extreme body mod implants. We can see this guy's got cheek, chin, forehead, oh, wow. nose, everything. There are also risks of things like nerve damage or infection, but these are rare if you go to a professional place. And to answer the question that many people had when watching this specific video, they did not implant actual brass knuckles. These are more than likely silicone. It's silicone. It's the shit where uh, you get your uh, BBL. Uh, she's fine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> You might not believe me, what? but yeah, this guy was turned into a frisbee. This creepy fact page uploaded a slideshow starting off by saying, did you know that the creator of the frisbee was turned into a frisbee himself after he died? They made the frisbee out of his skin. 
Oh. Back in 1946, this man, Walter Frederick Morrison, what? sketched out the designs for the first Frisbee, calling it the Whirlaway. It was then first sold in 1957, and of course, it became very popular, and it still is popular today. Morrison then went on to live a full life, living to 90 years old, and passed away on February 9th of 2010. He then requested to be cremated after his passing, which is not an unusual thing to do. However, the next part of his request was a little bit more bizarre. He asked to be permanently intertwined with his invention, and his ashes were placed into this frisbee behind me. So, this slideshow is more or less correct, however, the frisbee was not made out of his skin. You're not going to see something like Ed Gaines' okay. human furniture type of thing here. Yeah, that would have been crazy. Current population versus projected population. What? What is projected? 2050. Oh, they're going to guess in 2050. Okay. They're going to lose. Okay. A mill. I've grown her down. Yeah. Austria, 52,000. That ain't that bad. Switzerland, they're going to gain. I mean, probably, yeah. Bro, Switzerland is like rich. Serbia, they're gonna lose. Bulgaria's gonna lose. A mil and a half. What? Denmark gonna gain. Slovakia, minus half a mil. Okay, not that bad. Finland. 88,000. Norway, almost a mil. Ireland, say half a mil. Is dying out. There's a secret genocide in your O. What? How? Moldova, minus Bosnia. And Herzegovina. What? I thought it was always called Bosnia. It's called Bosnia and Herzegovina. What? Albania minus Lithuania minus half a mil. Damn. North Macedonia minus Slovenia minus Latvia minus. Estonia minus it ain't that bad I guess but we don't have that many people though that's a lot for us that's bad anyway it does not redirect shoot oh okay I get it minus plus Luxembourg is wealthy I guess that's why Malta minus Iceland. Isle of Men is even gaining. So yeah. Andorra is gaining too. Okay. Faroe Island is gaining too. Are you serious? Liechtenstein is gaining too. Are you serious? Bragg. San Marino is losing. The fuck is Gibraltar? Never heard of that. Vatican City, of course. Sucks out. <laughs> Smallest countries don't need to exist. Yeah, I don't get it. Why do they exist? You're my Donald Trump was born on June 14th. Rich family. Lucky. So he a boomer? Donald Trump? Yeah. <laughs> His father's real estate business invested in new city infrastructure. <laughs> Why 
one billion in 1988, bro. <laughs> With his show, The Apprentice. I don't think I heard of that show. I know he was in Home Alone. <laughs> Woman's had it easy. Eh. Oh no. He had it easy. He was born in a rich family. But a strong economy. What? Don't know. He literally said to a wealthy family. <laughs> Elections, yeah. Boomers lived in the economy where America was at its peak. Oh. I guess had it easy. Yeah, I don't really agree with that, but okay. It was actually paid off. I guess. My bad. If you're a person that regularly uses hair relaxers, then you probably should stop. This TikTok slideshow that I was tagged in shows a couple different brands of very popular hair relaxers saying it's just a hair relaxer, and then shows an image of a brain with this area right here highlighted, this being a brain aneurysm. Many people use hair relaxers for the purpose of straightening their hair. There's a chemical in here that breaks bonds in your hair, which allows it to fall freely. However, certain types of hair relaxers contain a chemical known as formaldehyde, and this chemical is very carcinogenic, meaning it causes cancer. And when you expose yourself to these hair relaxers uh -oh. that have formaldehyde in them, you are greatly increasing your risks for certain types of cancer. Namely, a relatively recent study has linked hair relaxers to brain cancer, but it can cause many other types of cancers to develop as well, including very rare ones. However, it doesn't increase your risk of aneurysm. Either way, if you want to continue using hair relaxers, make sure that you purchase one that does not contain formaldehyde. Hmm. I just found out that Velma Season 2 dropped today, and I'm oh, really hoping no, that bro. no one's watching it. But here's the thing. Someone watched it. Maybe a couple people watched it. And this is what we got out of Velma Season 2. And listen, I know what you're saying. Is that freaking Scrappy-Doo? Yeah. Apparently it is. Apparently it's a monstrous version of Scrappy-Doo that actually kills Velma in the TV show. Yes, you heard that. She died? This creature right here killed Velma in Velma Season 2. Now listen, this isn't me saying you need to go and watch Velma Season 2 now because Scrappy-Doo kills Velma. And that's probably what a lot of people wanted to see, ironically. I find it absolutely hilarious that they decided to go back and make another monstrous version of Scrappy-Doo. just killed her. Because if I had a nickel for every time that Scrappy turned into a monstrous being that killed people, I'd have two nickels because it's weird that this happened more than once. Also, they show the original like Velma and Daphne in the show too for some reason. Also, what? What the? I know that ain't supposed to be her. Hmm. So they stopped the show or? It can't be. This guy it is can't be Velma like since Velma is dead. I think they stopped it. Talk about treating him too harshly. What? University with no grades, awesome. no exams, no classrooms, no attendance, and no books.
is this school? What is this school? Hi, my name is Pratham and I'm the founder of Tedder. Tedder school idea. And at my business school, students travel to seven different countries to get a degree. Yes, he got rid of the classroom and put students on a plane to learn business in seven countries. From New York to Milan to Singapore to here in Dubai. Keep watching. By the end, he will give you a scholarship. Travel, build a business, oh. make money. That's every student's dream. Pratham was a top student at one of the best American universities. But after four years, he realized that I forgot most of what I learned. He was taking class after class, yeah. sitting on a chair, looking at a professor. This is the old way of learning from the 1800s. But we, we learn by doing not by sitting in lectures. So he hired a team to build a radical new university. They call it Tedder. And it works like this. Every four months, the entire class travels to a new country. They become temporary students in the best local university and start a real business. In Dubai, they build an e-commerce business, an AI business in San Francisco, a sustainable venture in Rio, a YouTube business in Madrid, an NGO what? in Ghana, a community-driven business in Singapore, and a consumer brand but you need in money New for Delhi. That. That's how education should be, global, practical and fun and in every country tetter signed a deal with the best university to teach students like iit in india nus in singapore and bocconi in milan this way you get the best of both worlds a world-class education that is practical after four years students do not get an a b or c they get R, C, and P, revenue, costs, and profits, a real business. On Sus. average, students end up building a business with a revenue of almost $20,000 with a profit of $5,000. This is the first school in the world of this kind. It's globally accredited. You get a bachelor's degree and it costs over $200,000, but here is the best part. Oh, no, he bro. is giving the first 60 students a 100% free scholarship, a 100% free education for four years to build seven no, businesses in seven catch. different campuses around catch. the world and even spend summer break at Everest Base Camp. We are looking for the 60 best high school students in the world to set the tone for Tedder. We will invest in you. All you have to do is apply here. I am so excited by this school that I oh, convinced no. him to give me two student scholarships. If you are a high school student, all you have to do no. is apply here and you can get a full four year scholarship worth $400,000. most homophobic American states. Did you know in recent years, several U.S. states uh. have passed laws that are widely seen as homophobic? So what are the worst states to be gay in in America? Florida ranks at the fifth place. Florida, Florida expanded its don't say gay law, banning discussions on sexual orientation and gender don't identity from pre-K through eighth grade. Last April, what? the Florida Board of Education voted to ban any mention of the LGBTQ community in elementary, <laughs> middle, and high school curricula. At number four, I mean, it's Montana. School. Over the that past few years, Montana passed many anti-gay laws. For instance, there's a bill allowing medical providers to deny care based upon ethical, moral, or religious beliefs. Clearly, there's no place for gays in the Big Sky State. Third place goes to North Dakota. It's the leading state in terms of the number of new laws targeting the LGBTQ community this year. In fact, the LGBT adult population estimate is below 2% only in North Dakota. That says it all. Second position is for Arkansas. 
has proven itself Arkansas. to be an early adopter of anti-LGBTQ legislation. Arkansas passed many restrictive measures, such as banning discussions of gay topics in schools and prohibiting transgender participation in sports. Last year alone, the going state crazy. enacted at least four anti-LGBTQ laws. Most homophobic in the United States is Tennessee. It's the most Tennessee. homophobic state with a huge number of anti-LGBTQ policies of any state. The local governments fail to give minorities equal rights, a sense of belonging, or no even a right? of physical safety. It even redefined sex in state laws to exclude LGBTQ plus identities. I say to Arkansas. Man, putting words in my mouth. Already, Roach. Mr. Beast is once again displaying his white savior complex while looking like a literal colonizer. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, he's literally helping them. Bro, what? Unsafe, life threatening conditions. We were able to build home after home for families in Jamaica. Mr. Beast had the audacity again <laughs> to help people in Jamaica. He's colonizing them. Bro, who knows what he did or said after the cameras were off? It's just an observation and his obvious and repeat. Yeah, who knows whatever the healer is doing behind his ex Twitter account? Like, bro, could be literally a pedophile. Like, that's his logic. Did racist <laughs> like, bro, what? White male YouTubers can get away with anything. He looks like he's about to pull out a whip. Bro. And why would he do that? Why would... Yeah, why would... <laughs> you know, like, the horseshoe thing? Am I on Twitter or... Yeah, bro, I feel like bro might be reflecting here. Like, oh, why would he I do said, that? These people are the most racist. The reason Probably, why they yeah. do this is because when Mr. Beast does something positive that helps people, it makes them think that they're losers. He's helping people in the world, and I am watching a hentai again for the third time. How can I find a way that... Ew, imagine. My indulgent degenerate behavior is actually morally superior to his. If people, like... Uh, it's just is peace and unity. Like Mr. Beast? Yeah? The Mr. Beast shoe. You would, wouldn't you? What? Huh? No? These people are racist. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's no. Yeah, yeah. You have to understand that all if of this was, hate yeah. is completely narcissistic. And when they see somebody who's doing a good thing, the first thing they think is, how can I make sure that this doesn't make me yeah. feel bad? Insane. Like, they're both. Yeah, they're fucked in the head. Like, it's literally a good thing, but I make it to a bad thing. Like, it never happened, though. Do you want to unalive someone, but you are afraid you may get caught? Huh? Bro, why are you saying that? If so, congratulations, you made it to criminal TikTok. And today, I'll explain to you how to cover up a murder, so you oh. are not a suspect. Hey, bro, chill. Step number one, pick a person with a lot of enemies that are very spread out and far apart. You see if you all of their enemies are in close proximity oh, okay. and you murdered them. The police will quickly clears all of them as suspects and then move on to you. But if they're super spread out, perhaps in different countries or different states, then it's going to be very hard for the police to figure out who did it. Damn, bro, who is on your mind? Step number two, burning down the crime scene is one of your best friend. Because not only the smoke and fire destroy the evidence. When the firefighters come to put out the fire, the foam from the water will destroy the evidence too. So you probably don't even have to clear your fingerprints or anything. Well, it's starting to make sense. If you have any weapons like in metals or wood, okay, burn it completely or melt it into solid block of iron. Then throw that shit in a random river. And if anybody finds it, no one will think it is a past weapon or something like that. Any steps left? If you exercise some unaliving, do it while they're on vacation. When they're spread out between multiple countries and multiple countries authorities need to collaborate to find someone makes it much more likely you're going to get away with it. Plus, with there is a one. chance that this country's police... I mean, I don't know. Chemical is going to prison. You st Brother... I stole candy as well when I was a fucking child. Like, that's nothing.
authority is just not strong. Okay, okay, bro, chill the fuck out. Last but not least, after you put them to a deep sleep, just flee the country. If you're not there, the police are gonna- No one dummy. What? Move on to easier people to investigate, and there is a chance they get a false positive and someone else gets arrested. Oh, you're saying to Raj. Tested for the crime. Oh, hell no. I'm out of here. Make sure to like and follow to stay on criminal TikTok. Hey, we don't kill people here, bro. Facts. Okay, bro. Balenciaga has to be a social experiment. Every time they drop a new clothing line, the outfits, bags, and shoes are extremely unflattering, and it feels like the fashion designer is playing a prank on their customers. Yeah. One of their purses looks exactly like a trash bag and retails for almost $3,000. Like, I don't get it, and people actually buy that shit. It doesn't make any sense. But that's not even the worst one. They also have a shirt that's stapled onto another shirt that goes for 1300 but the models don't even look good wearing it. They also have these slippers that look like they're from Amazon or Shein, but they cost over 600 euros, which is about $700. Not to mention they have a bracelet that's made out of tape for over $1,000 and a Balenciaga comb that's over 500 Insane. Even their shoes look like Skechers or New Balances, but somehow are thousands of dollars. Meanwhile, other designer shoes that look much more elegant, like Prada's or Louis Vuitton's, are half the price. But in my opinion one of their worst products has to be their salt and vinegar chips bag what which is almost two thousand dollars no oh you know all those chips are stale ain't no one buying this bro what you know all those chips are gonna be stale as shit Nah. Dollars. But if you were carrying this around in public, it looks like you went to the gas station to get a quick snack. It also comes in spicy chili and cheese onion, but honestly, those don't look any better. They even released a pair of trainers which intentionally look destroyed. Are you Okay. Destroyed that are around $2,000, but it doesn't even look like you can wear them. Someone ever bought this was wrongly gifted him. <laughs> yeah. Is it the same link? Hey USA, no. what's new with you? Apparently now in this country, presidents are above the law. Wait, what? How? Supreme Court today just said that presidents are immune, which means that they cannot go to court or go to prison if they do something technically illegal. Oh. That's part of their job. So for example, Donald Trump would not face trial for stuff that he's done to stay in power like in 2020. Okay, this is actually crazy and people here are worried like if presidents won't be punished they can do whatever they want without yeah. any fear of consequences so yeah that's a worry that's a good point and also which presidents does this affect it will be like trump biden and also any president who comes after them so like you know many to come i hope and people are saying that because like... trump appointed three of the people who are in the supreme court he kind of no, had don't say that, bro. This is one crazy law, U.S. But also, what did Biden say about it? Well, for once, he made sense. He said that no one should be above the law, not even presidents. I kind of agree, because some presidents can go crazy without, you know, yeah. fear of punishment. George I'm telling you, man, there's away. always something oh, interesting no. happening here. Not always in the good, but always something interesting. Okay. Complete the word. Yo, chill. What do y'all need? Bigger? Anger. Uh. Number nine. Okay. Oh, oh, that's nigger. Bigger. Hmm? Number eight. Grandfather. Grandfather. Easy. Number seven. That gotta be nigger. No way. Nagger. <laughs> Number six. S dinner? Singer. What do you mean, say Number something? All right, pizza. Number five. Nigga. Pizza. Bro, what the oh. fuck? Number four. Farmer. Picker. Farmer. What? Number three. Boxer. Boxer. Easy. Boxer. Yeah. Boxer. Number two. Singer. Th gamer. Oh, gamer. Oh, gamer. I saw the microphone that it was singing. Singer is don't. Chemical, please. Number one. Minor. Ah, uh, construction. Minor. minor, minor. 
share this to a friend. Chat, that shit was dumb hard, bro. <sighs> yeah, I bet it's hard for chemical. Okay, it's good you're not typing it, man. Chill out. <clears throat> I do. Peek the peak. I do want you to jerk off in front of us right now. Oh, no. no. Don't be shy. Take your pants down. Now. Chemical, yeah. In every stream. Jerk off now. Ah. <laughs> Baby boy. Boomers are people born between 1946 and 1964. They're called baby boomers because of increased birth rates during the 1940s to 60s. You can chill out daily. Era of economics prosperity, which saw a growth in suburban living. First generation to grow up with a television on a large scale. They had it easy. Okay. Yeah. First generation to have widespread access to higher education. Central to the civil rights movement and anti war protest. Smash! Pass! Many boomers were drafted in the Vietnam War. For having a really strong work ethic and retire later than other generations. Okay. That's low key autism as well. You get very focused if you're doing something. Boomers are the wealthiest generation in history, but not all of them are rich. Yeah. Can't be everyone. Thanks to advances in healthcare, boomers enjoy longer life experiences and better health than previous generation. Hey, hey, I respect, bro. Hey, I enjoy longer life. I might be a boomer, bro. I appreciate my life. I want to live as long as possible. Okay, bro, what? This is brain rot. That's bad, chemical. Chemical, bro. You need to see the meaning of life, bro. You need to find it. Word three will communicate. Okay, bro. Tom Holland. Hey, what the fuck? Man, I don't want to talk your bitch. Damn. That's what you get. He got the high ground. It's time to get out. Come on. It's time to get out. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Come on. Jesus. Normally, cats don't like uh, bats. Prudence. Let's go. Uh, Bro. Hey, come on. Uh, come on. Prue, get out of the bathtub. Prue, come on. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, come on. Yeah, the way she says no. <laughs> she 
not happy, man. What? Bruh. A game you can't play. Fair, yeah. That's probably Nexus 2, yeah. That's facts. You were heartbroken? What? Bro. It'll get better. Isn't it? Bro, spiders are literally your friends. They eat bugs. Well, at least the spiders in Europe, right? They're not deadly. Fire in your room with a huge nest. Let him live. Hey, honestly, that spider is killing other bugs. So I mean, you might as well. <laughs> I guess. He's your roommate. Nice. You're living rent free, though. You need to tax him. I feel like I've seen this though. You're going crazy. Sex in okay, bro. Fuck no. Gambling is better. Uh better than drugs? <laughs> you know what? I agree with that. Yeah. There's nothing worse than breaking up. Oh, you won. You start to lose interest in your favorite thing that has been with you your entire life and what describes you. I guess, yeah. It happens. The president business is gonna end the world? But he's such a good guy. And Octan, they make good stuff. Music, dairy products, coffee, TV shows, surveillance systems, all yeah. history books, voting machines. Wait a minute. True. No, sir, thanks. No, thanks. I told you no! I said no! 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 <laughs> nah. It's only 15 cents though, but I... Um, do you want to donate? Okay. Enemy fandoms choosing which character to sexualize. Yeah. Real, true. Live footage of Val finally stepping and performing one of the biggest bot and bot hoster band waves in TF2 history. As soon as the community began drawing gay porn of Omegatronic. Yeah, it's because of the community joined. <laughs> okay. 
break. Children don't deserve free food because that's communism. We're giving children free health care. We're giving them free food, free emotional support. That's dangerous. That's communism when you think about it. What? I think I just lost, lost a brain cell. Capitalist. Communism is when no food. Giving free food to children would be communism. <laughs> I guess. Wait, I didn't. Oh, no, I did that. But, uh, no. Bro. What the f <laughs> no. <laughs> he was badly broke before breaking bad. Wait, what? Murdered to make sure he should let guys insurance money. Source. What? Sm capitalism dreams anything that is free is communism. And when capitalism begins to give free things to people that do be communism. Yes. Yeah. Classic. Classic Garfield, yo. See what your lottery number is for Vietnam War. The fuck is my lottery like lucky number? I don't know, 21. Well, there's no 21. Oh, wait. There's 94. It doesn't get lower than that. 11. Um, I guess I'll go with, uh, 211. You don't know how it looks? I don't know, it's like, weird. It's like, most of them are three did it, did it, digits. You can see months. It's probably bad to see where to stream. Well, I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. Or is it, wait. I mean, I'm autistic. I don't know if I, if numbers from here or number for here. One to 31. Oh no. If from here I'll go with twenty one. And here then two one one I don't fucking know. Birthday day or something? No, it says Oh, it says wait, random selection uh Rick sequence. Now it says I mean see what your letter number is for the I think it's just random, pick a random number. The birthdays don't matter. Or does it? I don't know. It doesn't say select your birth date. 12th since it's your birthday. Uh, 12th of what? Hundred thirty nine, okay. 
I guess I'll go with that too then. Then fourth. 165. Oh. There is nothing. What? Well, that was eight. <laughs> pick a number and then what? Oh, it's, I think you pick a number and then get your lottery. Man. <laughs> It's just a word. Opa. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Eliminate our brains, yeah. That was almost uh, too difficult to understand. <laughs> Give boy advice, but then I say, I don't know though. Just in case I ruin his fucking life. <laughs> True. Facts. Bubba Gaga. What? Worthless nigga. Your gym is mine, you bitch ass nigga. Get that ass band, bitch. Get the fuck out of my chat. 40 to 1. Somebody ban that bitch ass nigga. <laughs> now. Bad advice to look on purpose. Wait, what? How was that bad advice? The fuck? You told her to go to the um hospital shits. You're joking? Yeah, I thought so too. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, they Damn. Got, they got cooked. Damn. Uh. Oof. Biggest what if? Yeah. What would have happened if? If oh Kenny. Clementine would have gone with Kenny. I mean, stay with Kenny. So I came up to you and she was. Little with you. What? It felt so embarrassed. If Kenny survived. Yeah. Bro, this shit is so overrated. I keep getting these fucking Magnum fucking ice cream ads. Like they're like taking a bite. It sounds like your balls are exploding. Like, bro, this is so overrated. Yeah, Magnum is ass. They keep fucking haunting me with their ad advertisements. Ben and Jerry's, though, they got some good ice creams. But of course, because they're American, right? I think. Of course, they make good ice cream. CCP, okay. CCCP. Never had those. Chief, if that's what you call them, that we've ever had. They can't stand him. So let's get that straight. And they like me more than just about any of them. Okay. And that's based on every single bit of information. As far as Russia and Ukraine, if we had a real... Bro woke him up. Передай от меня это послание своему хозяину. Черный мечник пришел. Так и скажи. Bro smoked so much he could build a 
fucking custom katana. Of course. Pilla zoned out. What? There are so many examples of modernization where stuff went from cool and awesome to just like lame, yeah. simple, and boring. And one of them is the Nesquik bunny. This Nesquik was him bunny. in the 2000s, you know. Cigar sword affects you dying, make your enemies a did it to smoke, yeah. He's dripped out, look at him. He, he's like a full-on skater boy, dude. This guy, you know, he was yep. pulling those bunnies. Like, look at him, dude. He's a, he's a chill dude. Those oh, bunnies. I wonder what he looks like now. Dude, he looks so stupid. Why did they do that to oh, him? Oh, no. Why did they make him so 3D? Bro got the N-word shirt. Crazy. And ugly, like genuinely. <laughs> Oh, bring back the skater boy and that's quick funny, please. Another thing that modernization has taken Love this over guy, no homo. So many Dive. commercials and advertisements. Like commercials in the two thousands, these would always oh, pop shit. off, you know, you're I mean he literally had an N word shirt. That makes no sense. Okay, bro, come on. And man. you get a little advertisement break. Those commercials, dude, they always made the products look so fucking good, like there was like the guy going, introducing the new awesome monster truck. Now shit, man, like commercials now, they only appeal to like boring people. Modernization sad, man. I've already talked about modernization a bunch on here, but I feel like it's something I just cannot like go up. Yeah, it kind of ruined things. Okay, that was the same thing. Like Nor in the show. In the comics. Oh. <clears throat> okay. He's basically a clone? Oh. Huh. is nothing you serve zero purpose you should kill yourself now and give somebody else yeah gta see not sorry hey cosgrove how come you never got married Cause I like meat too Isn't much. That? Age of consent. Oh yeah, sweet! A new ass. video from my favorite YouTuber! Thank you all so See not. He didn't know, it's fine. How hard does Patrick Starr work on his ass? Hey. Gold Simulator. I thought this part of the move, not the movie, the show was uh, was fucking goofy as shit. Like flying sheeps. Like what is this? Bro? Drop back. Right. Yeah, this is Gold Simulator. Low key. <laughs> Low key. Crash out. Food again, I dare you. Oh, wow. Cut out that nigga eyes, he. That nigga, oh boy, ah. Nigga, nigga, try. Nah, that's like some psycho shit. You know what? I don't like. Like, your head has to be like, you gotta be some, some weird for doing that. It's crazy. Like this. All these games. Oh, this is are classic. based on the dark side of life. The knife, you're closer. It's more personal. You're so dirty. Uh-oh. You're a naughty boy. Go oh! <laughs> I hit a woman for the first time in my life. And I'm having fun. Let's go. 
Bad news for Windows users as Microsoft starts testing ads in the Windows 11 oh, start no. menu. This is very frustrating. It feels like I'm I cooked. can't go one day on this channel uh, oh, without... Ban that guy, please. Now. Oh, yeah, I'm cooked. Covering some sort of new invasive advertising technique instead of just the science that I really want to get into. But it looks like this. When you click the start Thank menu, you. it's going to Loser. pop up. Facts. And in your list of recently used or searched programs or things that you know you might think you already have installed and need, some of them are going to be ads to try to get you to install third-party software. Oh, I'm and cooked. that's on top of the little corner pop-ups that I already get on Windows 11, very much so like this. And on top of the, like, when I start my Windows 11, about half the time it opens up a browser window and the browser window is some kind of advertisement for something, even if it's just a Microsoft tool or something that I'm not using. It's really, really frustrating. Now, thankfully, this is still in beta. As of right now, only Please users stop. on the Windows 11 beta are going to be seeing this, and they're testing it out, seeing how many people click, how many people oh, use no. it, blah, 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 blah. But the trend is very clear. Windows oh, started, trend. sorry, Microsoft started giving away Windows for free a number of years ago. And because of that, they've decided to go ad supported. So that means every time I boot my computer, my essential work tool, it tries to trick me into buying and installing other apps, which is very frustrating. And well, in my case, there's nothing really more convenient to replace that with. Linux users out there, you know it's not as convenient. Oh, I'm cooked. But who uses Linux, though? In billion years? Not really. More like, um... One of those, um... I don't know if you had, like... It was like some dumb shits like, Oh, the world is gonna end today or some shit. Then, yeah. Uh, then, then I was like panicking when I was a kid. Like the world is gonna end today or some bullshit. Depression got you? Oof. <laughs> Bro got cancer. Getting too crazy. Hey, yo, what the fuck? That ain't Batman. Yo! A sex man. He's man, yeah, true. I'm rubbing peanut butter on my cock. Yo! I'm rubbing peanut butter on my cock. Yo! I'm rubbing peanut butter on my cock. Yo! Bro, what is this song? America TF2 for real. Yeah. Yeah, peep this jump, man. Batman and Robin versus... Okay, bro. Nah. Come on. Yeah, the character is rather iconic, and I had no idea. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a gamer. I don't play video games. I never did. I didn't even know what the project was. Oh, wow. I just thought, I mean, for me, the, the opportunity to be a cartoon character, because they said, you know, it's going to be motion capture, and it was going to be our likeness, so it's going to look like me. And I thought to be a cartoon character was cool. A video game I don't care about, I don't know about. <laughs> Damn. So I was just like, You don't oh, care. Wow. Like, I get to be a cartoon like that that for me was the appeal and then of course uh, reading like calling yourself a cartoon character is crazy yeah, it was it's a fun crazy character so who wouldn't want to play that kind of character so that was i didn't even know about the video game world when we were shooting it even though we were in a studio with the posters because you know it was a code name so we, we weren't supposed to know what it was and uh ned and solo who play franklin and michael they of course were like they're gamers. They're like. Hmm. Trevor didn't even know. No, his name is probably not even Trevor. Trevor. Oh my God.
Bro, what? Oh, Fuck did they see? That's actually not bad for it. <laughs> Tom and Jerry? That look creepy though. Me and you and Chen chemical. Instead I'm sorry. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. What even happened? Stroking my dick, I got lotion on my dick when I'm stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, babe. I'm a freak, babe. Like, of course, you came back for this. Okay. The timing is insane. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, man. Physique. Although his original height is unknown, physique. as an above you average can't get his physique. Secret Service agent, he was likely around six foot four and weighed about 200 pounds. But after being exposed to radiation, the goat ended up standing at 12 feet tall and can't weighing 4,000 pounds, with a maintenance level of around 3,500 calories per day. Fortunately, his power armor continually pumped him with bugs to keep him alive. He is an absolute unit, capable of tearing death claws in half, going toe to toe with Liberty Prime, but not able to match Mama Murphy's strength. To get his build, with his strongest points huh? being his shoulders and arms, you'll need significant resilience to overcome Fallout's FEV and survive multiple experiments that will make you stronger than any other super mutant. For his massive arms, focus on exercises like bicep curls, tricep extensions, and reverse curls. For shoulders, do these to increase your strength level to 10. And for the rest, even the game developers have stated that Frank's stats are all 10 out of 10, making his physique nearly impossible to attain. But if you have what it takes, you'll become an absolute tank. Share this with a friend who you needs the protocol. Like, bro, you need... Bro, like, what? No. Literally impossible. What? Return to sender. Harvem ja masina teie pesemisel säästad elektri. Aga mida kauem riided pesemist ootavad, seda rohkem plekid sisse kuivavad. Ariel Extra Clean Kapsel plekki emalduse jõuga. Jaam. Emaldab mustuse, nii et masina täis riideid on laitmatult puhtad ja lõhnavad fantastiliselt värskelt. Ariel Extra Clean. Hoia lastele kätte saamatus kohas. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, nice try. You have just reached a YouTube checkpoint. I promise I won't take up too much of your time so you can go back to scrolling in a minute. But I want you to become aware of how fast you're breathing, what you can hear, what you can smell, your hands on your phone, how does the phone feel, like what you're sitting on, what you're standing on. Become aware of everything. And then I want you to become aware that you are aware of all of these things. You have just entered what is called the presence moment. It's pretty peaceful, isn't it? You don't get to experience it much nowadays. Just sit here for a moment. No past, no future, no worrying thoughts. Give yourself a break. Before I let you go, let's take a deep breath together. All right, three, I don't trust two, them. one. And out. Let go of all that tension, take another one if you need to. And look, I'm not gonna tell you to stop scrolling, get off your phone and start being productive. I just want you to do what you know is best for you right now, what you know you should be doing. And if you wanna put that in the comments to keep yourself accountable, go ahead and do so. Now he looks too happy. That is gonna be a jump scare or some shit. All right, I'll check uh, chemicals links. He only got two. What? That's a 
Wait, 7 Eleven has a Lithuanian lag flag? I just realized. Dylan is in Discord in React Monday. Oh, well, that will take time. Minecraft Redstoners have gone gone too far. You see, back in 2020, most people were busy building fully functioning walking houses or update suppressors that could delete entire Minecraft servers. But anyone that had access to YouTube could easily make these insane builds in their own worlds by just following simple tutorials. But in September of 2022, everything changed when a YouTuber named Sammy Yuri came up with the most insane Minecraft idea ever. Let's take a look I mean, at the current make, yeah, biggest redstone invention. Before this player even started to build the redstone, he recruited two of the best redstoners and coders to help him, built an entire computer out of redstone with 8 kilobytes of redstone memory, 6 kilobytes of graphics memory, full-on hardware acceleration unit, 256 gigabytes of RAM, a 1.3 million block big graphics processor, and finally a 96 by 64 pixel screen that allowed the team to finally play Minecraft inside of Minecraft. But why? Wait, this is another one? This is crazy. Help me. Hey, stop it. A year ago, we visited a rural village in Zambia where there was no electricity, limited water, high crime rates, and countless other issues making life a constant struggle for these kids and staff. But despite the seemingly hopeless situation, there was someone doing everything she could to help these children. Meet Dora. Five years ago, she moved to Mapapa along with four adopted children and started awesome. making TikTok videos to raise money to build a school and village for kids in desperate need. And very quickly, her account grew to over 4 million followers. And she now cares for almost 400 children. You are amazing. Thank Damn. you, and I love you. But despite her best efforts, the cost of supporting all these kids is an ongoing challenge and threat to their community. So we immediately got to work alongside our partners from Give Power to build a solar array that would provide the village with much needed electricity and security. And for many of the children, this was the first time they saw light at night. Oh, wow. <laughs> But when we left the village, we realized that there is so much more that needed to be done. We were so moved by Dora and the kids that we committed to double our contribution, to give Dora the resources she needs to give these kids a loving and safe environment. By tripling her solar generation capacity, doing a full hydrological study to provide a proper I mean, well with plenty of clean, like safe water, Ooh. install a state-of-the-art internet network, and so much more. And because of your incredible support, we were able to kick off this massive project by constructing a well. And this is just the first of so many things we will be doing in this video. For so many of the children, this is the first time that they will have fresh drinking water, and it now flows in abundance. On your mats? But sadly, okay, there was one child bro, who couldn't what? join in on the fun because she was still recovering from an injury. Not to this say that. is beauty. So the last time that Den and Duran were here, they were made aware Yo. about a girl called Beauty. She's one of my girls here. When she came to us, she was Beauty. a very shy, timid girl. One of her legs had gangrene and oh. was about to be amputated. We told Dora that we would take whatever steps were necessary to save Beauty's leg. We got the pictures and we got the treatment protocol. And we sent them to our friends at Cure International from the video we did in the Philippines, who also operate a hospital in Zambia. They told us that it was very likely that Beauty was going to lose her leg, but if we didn't act immediately, there was a good chance that she would lose her life. Cure agreed to take her case, and despite the dismal odds, they promised to do everything that they possibly could to save Beauty's leg. We stayed at the hospital for three months. We did three operations on her. That's crazy. While Beauty was in the hospital, the team back in Mapapa made incredible progress with the rest of the construction. Hey guys, yeah. I miss you so much. I miss you so much. 
they have such a great environment for kids. And they just took her out of that shell of fear and just told her to say, hey, you'll be okay. So who's your favorite teacher? <laughs> Very nice. It's been an amazing experience to kind of see her transform into what she is now. <laughs> A few weeks after her final surgery, Beauty was able to leave the hospital. Who is discharged? Then she got a leg. You? She just slowly Didn't changed into leg. this bubbly, fun, talkative girl. <laughs> it's been amazing. <laughs> it's been really great. <laughs> I'm able to feed all the kids here through my videos on social media, but that was a big challenge for me to do because I had to drive about a, an hour and a half away from where I live almost each day to buy the food that we have. Since our last visit, when we saw how old and unreliable Dora's car was, I'd been really concerned that she had breakdown on the remote roads in Zambia without even having as much as cell phone coverage. My worst fears were realized one morning when I was woken up by a message from Dora telling me that she had just been in a wreck and her car was totaled. Darren wasted no time and quickly jumped on a call with her. Hey, Dora. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good now, I'm doing good. I think that this is a sign that we better buy you a new car right now. I want you to go look for a car. We will pay for it next week. Okay. Um... Oh. Just... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a bit... It's a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. With her new car, Dora can now travel to get food for the village without any worry of breaking down and being left stranded. Just a few weeks later, the construction was almost complete and Dan and Darren were on their way to Mapapa to see just how much the village has changed since their last visit. Dan and Darren are about to return and I'm super excited to show them all the amazing things that have been happening at the school because of them. Oh my God. Reuniting with Dora and the kids after nearly a year was a truly cool magical experience. After receiving a warm welcome by the kids, Dora showed Dan and Darren around the well. We now have clean drinking water, and because of that, the kids' confidence has risen. We don't have skin infections, we don't have dirt. Maybe millions, yeah, but billions? Yeah, I don't think so. Area anymore, I where they less. sleep, their clothes, everything. Their confidence has just grown up because they're in a clean, safe environment. With clean water, the village is now far more self-sufficient. Dora is able to grow vegetables in her garden, cultivate a chicken coop, and even sustain a fish pond to provide food for the kids. And on top of that, what? we also provided Dora and the kids fish a commercial pond. gas stove so they no longer have to burn through bags of charcoal for cooking. But there was one more thing that was severely impacting Dora's ability to take care of these kids. In order to upload a TikTok, I mean, Dora you could call. I mean, this is a, this is the would have to stay already doing. But yeah. And for hours holding her pole up to get an internet connection. But now with the new solar grid. Hey, that's what I'm saying or I meant to say. We can put in a brand new Starlink Wi-Fi router. That has literally been installed today, and I am Three super years, happy yeah. and super excited about that. We can connect to it together for the first time. <laughs> Lights on. We're on. Connected. <laughs> okay, let's see how well it works. I have a better idea. How about to try making a TikTok? Don't make me dance. So, we'll be here. I will come. Wave during your turn. Then, uh, wave. Uh. Very nice. Then, we will start rolling like that. But you are going out, and then he will follow, then I will be the last person. Okay, are you guys ready? Yep. All right. Oh. Very nice. Wave. Cool. Stay there. Wave. Okay, come now. Okay, okay, okay. We almost got it. Slower. Very yes. nice. Wave. Nice. <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> this one's really nice. We got it finally. It's fire. The guy in the white shirt looked sad. <laughs> it's dripping. <laughs> he did not want to be in a TikTok video.
Okay. Now let's head over to the house and see if we can upload it. Yeah. It's, a big time it's done! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks to this new internet connection, the village is much safer because they are not isolated and Dora can also now upload her TikToks whenever she wants from anywhere in the school, meaning that she can generate more money to support the village. And on the day Darren and Darren were about to leave, Dora told us that she had a surprise for us. And before we reveal what that surprise is, I want to tell you about Electric E-Bikes. When we told Electric E-Bikes our plan to revisit the village and give Dora everything she needed, they, as always, stepped up to the plate and put down the additional funding required to do so. If you don't know who Electric E-Bikes are no, no. and what they do, they are on a mission to change people's lives helping. by increasing their mobility while being energy efficient through the creation of really affordable and easy to use electric bikes. Whether you need to travel to school, work, medical treatments, it is perfect for the job. To find out more, click the link. I'm gonna lie, the electric uh, bikes we have in public, it's kind of cancer. Description and buy electric e-bike. Literally scam. For yourself, the more you guys buy, the more they can sponsor videos. Like it the public uh, electric bikes we have, or whatever the fuck. It's a beautiful loop. Darren is yet to see the dormitory that had been completely rebuilt after a storm had ripped through it last year, leaving it in ruin. It is because of all of you that donated to the fundraiser in the last video that Dora had just enough to rebuild these dorms, stronger than before. And after months of hard work, the reconstruction of the building was finally complete. And Darren got to see it for the first time. I'm blown away how much Dora takes everything that we give her and multiplies it a hundred times over. All right, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> so as of today, this house will no longer be called the boys' house. It will be called the Peace Philanthropy House. Later that night, we celebrated with the entire village. Having this house dedicated to Beast Philanthropy is a massive honor to each and every one of us because Beast Philanthropy is all of us. You see, without your support, we wouldn't be able to do projects like this. And I want you to know how much we love and appreciate you. Dora is such a kind and giving person and she's had such a huge impact on so many people's lives. I hope you all find her as inspiring as I do and are motivated to find your own way to help build a brighter future because every one of us has the ability to make a difference in somebody else's life. Chandler told me he had a special message for you guys, so we'll end the video with that. What was it? Donate. Use the link in the description below or the donate button. Yep, that's the message. <laughs> I would donate if I was rich, but uh, I'm good. <clears throat> How it has, bro, come on, man. 1K, 300,000 dislikes. Should be so less, Mr. Beast just recently. Less than that. <laughs> yeah. Only tweeted out, if we lower the age to run for president, oh. I'll jump in the race. And you know, considering the current situation that is going on, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a genuine shot with it. Like, I locked all congressmen in a room until they passed a decent law. Would that be a video? So Mr. Beast just... I mean, that would be cool. Samsung, W ad. Hyvasti te ismeline mina. Huh? Aeg lõhnata, nagu mees. Old Spice, kaua püsiv, julge, parfüümi kvaliteet. Meile meeldib lõhnata nagu te ismelised, see sobib meile. Enam mitte. Can't skip this though. Lõhnamiseni te ismeline mina. Easily recognizable to anyone who is a fan of the classic Fallout games, Frank Horrigan is by far one of the most I'm scary and I intimidating characters so we've ever had in a Fallout boy. game. Since I've been getting into the classics again myself, I figured I would pay a little homage to him and ask if I could go through and beat Fallout New Vegas Wait, while how? playing as Frank Horrigan. How? What? This run is going to be a little bit different from what I normally do, considering setting up a character like Frank Horgan is going to be absolutely terrifying. So I went through and of course picked his actual tag skills from Fallout 2. The thing with Frank Horgan though is he has 10 in every special, yeah. which means that this run is not exactly going to be very difficult. 
but uh, you know, it should be pretty entertaining. For oh, traits, nice. I just went with stuff that would kind of make me terrifying and headed right out into the Mojave and started my adventure. First things first, I set all my specials to 10 and then worked around with some console commands to make myself a little bit taller. Now, the reasoning for this is that Frank Horrigan was actually a super mutant that the Enclave ended up experimenting on. He was doors. an original soldier that was just a bodyguard for one of the presidents, but ended up being exposed to FEV during a patrol near Mariposa military base, and so this, of course, made sure that the Enclave would experiment on him and see what they could do with him to turn him into a super soldier. That is why we end up being about 12 feet tall. Frank Horgan had his own suit of custom-fitted Enclave power armor, and he was an absolute menace. Yep. By far one of the most terrifying things we've ever seen in Fallout. Even the voice actor that they had for him in Fallout 2 was just absolutely terrifying. Now, Frank Horrigan is kind of a hard character to build, considering the equipment he uses isn't, yeah. you know, really accessible in New Vegas. He used melee weapons, which was, was basically a, a big-ass sword that he had on his arm, as well as a unique plasma rifle. Back in Fallout 2, the plasma rifle was basically the plasma caster, though, so we're going to be using the plasma caster for this run, and I'm going to be going ahead and searching for the Enclave Remnant's power armor, since that's about as close as I can get to Frank Horrigan without just going and getting custom modded armor or something similar. So that's what we're going to be doing for this run. Of course, the first piece of the Enclave Remnant armor is in a cave filled with Cazadors, which was not a fun experience for me to deal with. It took me about 20 minutes to get the piece from there, and then I just headed off towards the strip. Considering all I had at this point was a melee weapon, I figured that I would just go ahead and uh, pick up the plasma caster, since it's a pretty easy thing to grab. There's one just chilling in the silver rush that I can go pick up and start using for the run. Now, I'm not yeah, going to be surely. using anything else. Technically, there are, you know, multiple different instances of Frank using different weapons and stuff, but I think just for the sake of this, I'm going to use what he is using in the boss fight during Fallout 2, which is, of course, his uh, in-game boss level plasma rifle. It's not obtainable without glitches as far as I'm aware in Fallout 2 but uh, we'll just go ahead and say that it's a plasma caster for the sake of simplicity. Yeah, and considering fuck. I'm playing as a psychotic super mutant that absolutely views everyone as a mutant and uh, an enemy of the Enclave, I figured I would just kind of go on a murderous rampage and kind of kill anyone that yeah. got in my way while I was on my way over to Deathclaw Promontory to get the other piece of Enclave remnant armor. This was not going to be a fun experience considering I was like level six by the time I got the there doors? and I was oh. not really prepared for the amount of death claws that were there. It's been probably three or four years since I've been to this place in an actual playthrough. Like I don't think I ever go here on my own, mostly because I don't use power armor personally whenever I play through New Vegas just casually. So it was yeah. kind of scary when I got here and I was expecting like, you know, maybe 10, 15 death claws. You know, just a slightly harder quarry junction or something. Yeah, no, I got here with like 700 plasma ammo, and by the time I left, I had next got to no cooked. supplies. I was running out of stims, I was running out of ammo, oh. I ate up pretty much all of my weapon repair kits that I had. There were so many death claws here, it was actually mind boggling. Dude, that's to me. Insane. But on the bright side, I Holy. did actually end up getting a super big amount of XP from this place. The death claws are, of course, you know, worth a ton of XP You're because they're death ammo. claws. So this place was actually really, really nice for some early levels. See, the thing is, there's supposed to be Enclave Remnant Power Armor right there, where I was, you know, walking up against the cliffside. But considering I have a mod installed that adds about 300 new locations to New Vegas, there's an abandoned Enclave base here. It actually has lore and stuff, which I thought was really cool. They uh, apparently were experimenting on Death Claws in here, and it got out of control, and none of the soldiers could really do anything. So that's why there's just an absolute shit ton of Death Claws in here. And I did just kind of run around for a while, kill things, loot. I ended up finding my armor that I needed, and went back to start stocking up on supplies. Now, of course, if I was actually just purely Frank Horrigan for this run, I would be killing basically everyone. I would be wiping out anyone because he basically viewed anyone who wasn't part of the Enclave. And again, even people that were part of the Enclave as just subhuman lowered life forms that didn't deserve life. 
but I kind of can't do this on this run considering I need certain NPCs to be alive. I need you know, access to shops and stuff for ammo. But of course, this isn't going to stop me from going on my typical murderous rampages and clearing out places like the Kings because everyone here deserves to die regardless. I figured after I was done here and made it to the strip that the only ending that really made sense for me to do on this playthrough was Yes Man, because obviously Frank wouldn't support anyone that isn't the Enclave. What? And I know you're thinking that I should be doing, you know, the Enclave Remnants questline as well, but I'm not going to do that since Frank didn't actually really like any of the Enclave soldiers that he worked with. He would mostly just kill them or terrify them so bad that they didn't ever want to work with them. Followed shelter? Assassin's... Green Rebellion, what? Assassin's Creed Rebellion. I don't know about that. I played Fall of Shelter, though. I think it's a good game. Him ever again. So, uh, I'm just going to use that as a reason to not do that quest line because I'm lazy. Um, but, you know, we're going to just move past that and go to the tops and start killing everyone inside. Again, another murderous rampage. This is kind of similar to my Kill Everything run and my Raider run. But, you know, this time I'm just a AFK. massive giant man in power armor with a plasma That's caster it, oh. that just terrifies everyone. Except, you know, the plasma caster was the plasma rifle in Fallout 2. You know what? The guns are just extremely confusing. If you go back and play the old Fallouts, it just, it's so weird, man. I love all the weapons, though. They're fantastic. Next up, of course, is going to the Lucky 38 and killing Mr. House, since I obviously need to for the main quest line. I figured, you know, instead of me just running to his little elevator and going down and killing him like I normally do, I remembered that I am a massive man in power armor and I can just, you know, kill all the Securitrons in there for easy XP. I also just Fair. went on a murderous rampage as soon as I left as well. I killed all the Securitrons outside, I killed a bunch of the NCR troopers, I killed the civilians, killed nice. basically everybody in the strip. Obviously I'm not going to come back and kill them all again when they respawn just because that's, you know, kind of a waste. And there's not really a point, because in my mind, once they die once, the respawns don't count. Next thing on the list was going to the what? white gloves and That's dealing with crazy. all of them. Nothing here was really challenging except the plasma caster having really bad accuracy. Honestly, that's the main issue I have with this gun, is I feel like anything over like 30 feet and this thing just kind of sucks. Like, the accuracy is just not great. I mean, I, I miss point blank shots with it as well. I don't know if it's just the plasma caster itself or if it's something to do with a mod i'm not entirely sure but the plasma caster i just i really have never liked this thing in new vegas i don't know why it's not going to stop me from using it against the brotherhood though and absolutely slaughtering everyone inside i was actually surprised at how much damage this thing was doing through power armor to the brotherhood members like it was insane <clears throat> The plasma caster might not have the best accuracy, but it is still a really, really good weapon. It's absolutely fantastic for, you know, killing things, assuming you actually hit them. The Brotherhood, yeah. they didn't stand a chance. The turrets got blown up in here, the paladins all died. Pretty much everybody was just executed on sight. Nobody could really do much to me. I did take a lot of damage during this run, but I'm mostly blaming that to the fact that my character is literally like 60% taller than he's supposed to be, so my hitbox is obviously increased as well. Um, we're just gonna blame that instead of me being bad at the game. I went and just kind of killed everybody in Good Springs. I figured it was time, you know, I've used this place pretty much as much as I would need and I was stocked up on basically everything else that I would need for the run. So everyone there was pretty much free game to die. I then went back to the tops because I couldn't find Yes Man. I then spent about 30 minutes troubleshooting, trying to get him to just spawn in so that I could, you know, the game. But for some reason, the game just nice neglected try. to spawn him. He wasn't up in Benny's room. He wasn't outside the tops waiting to try to get him to spawn. Didn't do anything. I eventually had to just console command him into the game to get him to, you know, actually be here. And then I just sent him over to the Lucky so that so, we could get yeah, that so many gambling. I figured, ads. you know, since I almost Insane. never do it, and I actually remembered to do it this time for Yes Man's run, that I would actually go to the fort and start killing nah, that's things. that's an L, bro. You know, I normally never actually go and do the fort on Yes Man's questline. I don't know why, I just kind of forget. 
I think it's because Mr. House requires me to go to the fort and upgrade the Securitrons, whereas Yes Man doesn't, so I just kind of get sidetracked and forget to do anything. So I headed my way over to Cottonwood Cove so that I could just kill everybody here and, you know, make my way to the fort. This wasn't no. really challenging. The no, Legion is, is just very lackluster. I don't think they would have ever stood a chance against the Enclave, which is, you know, pretty, pretty likely, honestly. I mean, the Brotherhood obviously kind of helped in Fallout 2 against the Enclave, but by then they were pretty low on everything, really. I mean, they didn't really have a strong footing back then. Not sure if the NCR ever really got into it with the Enclave. I honestly don't remember much about Fallout 2 as I haven't played that in a hot minute. But I figure if they would have got into it with the old, you know, like actual big Enclave from what? Fallout 2, they probably would have lost a good chunk of their resources to the Enclave. I mean, the only reason the Enclave is even gone in Fallout 2 is strictly because of the Chosen One. I don't think anybody else would have actually been able to take them on as far as, you know, the other characters and factions go. Anyways, back to just murdering a bunch of factions that I don't agree with. Do. Next up was the Great Khans, who didn't stand a chance whatsoever. I did have a couple game crashes in Red Rock for some reason. Cons I don't know cool, why. The game just decided to kind of have a seizure on me a little bit occasionally. I tried sniping with the Plasma Caster, which didn't work out very well. And once this was done, I went back to go put Yes Man into the Lucky 38, and surprise, surprise, his questline broke again. I sat here for probably 15 minutes waiting for him to just insert himself into the computer, but he wasn't here. I don't know why he wasn't here. I mean, I watched him go to the Lucky 38 earlier, and then I just kind of gave he up and himself. reloaded an old save so that I could go deal with the boomers. I forgot to deal with them earlier. I honestly don't even remember dealing with them at all. I, I'm not sure why I didn't deal with them earlier like i just kind of skipped over them i guess i just kind of spaced it i uh, i mean if you're talking to me i already i've already seen all of it it is a good game usually though. i deal with the boomers like first and the brotherhood last typically but uh i think since i was just so overpowered this i mean they have a good games yeah it's a web web game browser game that was low-key my childhood as well you can play them on phone too, which is cool. Run. I went and did the Brotherhood early, and in my brain, I was just like, ah, yes, the Brotherhood is done. I am now done with all the factions. So, to make up for this, and uh, while I was just trying to rack my head for ideas on fixing Yes Man, I went and cleared out the entirety of Camp McCarran and killed basically everyone so that I could get more free stuff and XP. Again, you know, since I'm technically part of the Enclave, I figured it makes sense for me to just go kind of Probably. murder all of them. I then got sidetracked again and went back to Hidden Valley so that I could go up to Black Mountain and go kill Tabitha, as I didn't do this earlier since I didn't have a weapon. She didn't really stand a chance either, I mean she just kinda died immediately. After that I went out and bonked one of the Nightkins on the head. If I haven't played I've probably seen it. If there isn't any recent Stickman, Henry Stickman games. With a super sludge. I figured I would, you know, try to get his melee weapon up and going, and since he uses a unique sword in Fallout 2, I figured the bumper sword from the Nightkins would be about the closest thing I could Played get to that. Nice. So this is going to be our uh, melee weapon for the run. All the D and D Dungeons and Dragons never got to play it because I don't have friends. So you know, I kind of don't <laughs> need it since I have the plasma caster. There's not a whole lot that. Uh, but uh, I think it would be interesting. I need a melee weapon for. It was still fun to just kind of run around at Hoover Dam with it, though, and just kind of bully things. Thanks. I apparently killed so many of the Great Khans this run that none of them even spawned at Hoover Dam, which is kind of nice for once. I swear, every time I wipe out the Great Khans, they always just pop up at Hoover Dam anyways. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure I killed all of you and your leadership. I don't know why there's still like eight of you here, but, you know, we're going to ignore that and move on because uh, Fallout. Anyways, yeah. once I was inside the dam, it nobody really stood a chance. I mean, at this point, I was so overpowered and high level compared to where I typically am during Imagine these runs that everyone was basically just getting melted immediately. Thanks. Uh, the Legate just... I don't even really have to say anything about this. I mean, he just got cyber bullied. I didn't even use the plasma caster. I just 1v1'd him with a bumper sword and killed Both him flying. in like 10 seconds. He didn't stand a chance. I also got him to just, you know, ignore all of his troops with a bunch of buffs so that I could get my speech high enough that he would 1v1 me. And then General Oliver arrived. This was, you know, 
about as typical as you would think for what would happen to the NCR if they tried to, you know, tell Frank Horrigan what to do. None of them really stood a chance. And honestly, it's kind of terrifying to think about what it would be like if the Enclave took over in New Vegas oh, and yeah, that'd be was, scary. you know, actually the ones that owned the Strip. But that's a that's a whole different can of worms that could open up a big discussion. Anyways, this was pretty much easy as far as runs go. Honestly, I was, you know, wasn't really expecting this run to be a loss or anything. Lenor esitleb, hard. kas yeah. pesule on võimalik anda välisõhu värskust linna selades. Nüüd on see palju lihtsam tänu uuendustele Lenorilt. Kasuta Lenor Fresh Air efekti ja saa pesu, mis on sama värske nagu õues kuivatatud. Proovi meie parimat värskust. This is Marcius. If you like his content, like and subscribe. It's very important if you want to watch more content. Today, Marches will show you a mod that lets you become a super mutant in Fall of New Vegas. As you can see, while you are a super mutant, other mutants do not attack you. Moreover, you can uh, interact with me. Nature ties up my vices again. Uh, nature ties up my vices again. Oh, it, Rainbow Six is it's like CSGO. Um, yeah, pretty much. But it has like abilities and stuff so kind of like valorant valorant uh csgo had a baby i guess yeah I what do you mean nah you got abilities <laughs> fuck you mean nah you are a mutant others will be happy in a different way this makes the mod very immersive nothing good waiting uh, for you further on goodbye I suggest you to leave toward Jacobstown. There's nothing good waiting for you. For At Big Mountain, you will be able to find friendly tentors and equipment. As a mutant, you will only be able to use mutant armors. If you manage to get the Remnant's power armor, you will become something similar to Frank Horrigan. But you will not become as strong as he is. I'm sure everyone here has encountered the Enclave in a Fallout game at least once, if not many more times. First we defeated them once and for all on the west coast, then we defeated them once and for all on the east coast, and then, well they're still showing up aren't they? And how many times have we been able to play as them? One, maybe two? Not really. The best you can get is helping a bunch of retired soldiers with one last hurrah, and then LARPing as an Enclave soldier in 76. We keep seeing this faction, or at least references to it in Fallout 4's case, but we still have yet to actually join or help this faction. I'll tell you a little secret, the Enclave is actually my favourite faction. I know, I know, shocking. So it might surprise you to know that I am so goddamn sick of seeing these bastards everywhere. Now why is that? Well, partly because the art style change makes it physically painful to actually look at anything. The X01 looks Oh, it's 23 already. Uh... You is in effect. Return to your home immediately! <sighs> this is pointless. The war is over. Irrelevant! Under the terms of the Martial Law Act, Section 12.J, those refusing to comply with the curfew order are to be pacified. Welcome to Camp Navarro! So you're the new replacement! You are out of uniform, soldier! Where is your power armor? Don't have any? You expect me to believe that, maggot? 
The truth is, Who you lost an expensive piece of army issue equipment. That suit is going to come out of your pay, and you will remain in this man's army until you are 510 years old, which is the number of years it will take for you to pay for a Mark II powered combat armor you have lost. Now get out of my face and don't come back until you look like a soldier! Not that many links left, I might just look at the source. Oh, oh, oh. Welcome to Camp Navarro. So you're the new replacement. You are out of uniform, soldier! Where is your power armor? Don't have any? You expect me to believe that, maggot? The truth is, you lost an expensive piece of army issue equipment. That suit is going to come out of your pay, and you will remain in this man's army until you are 510 years old, which is the number of years it will take for you to pay for a Mark II powered combat armor you have lost. Now get out of my face and don't come back until you look like a soldier! Yeah, the Omni-Man meme. 39 buried. My right ear. Zero found. You're pointless. 39 buried. My right fucking ear. Uh. Wait, was it this one or this is the old one? This is the old one. Wait, you had a. Uh... Shit. Chemical had one link. What is this? May 2005. 21 year old Yumi Huang from South Korea. 11 minutes. How you get away with murder? What? Crazy Link. Not really. I think it's. Surely it's safe. It could be interesting. Copy for later on. I'll watch it on the next uh, reaction. Alright, but yeah. Uh, gonna wrap it up. It's late. Tomorrow? Pookie. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. I mean, it's only 11. I guess, fuck it. It's only 11 minutes. Alright, anyway, as always, love all your mentors, hope you enjoyed your stay, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. So, peace out, and good night. Hey yo, what the fuck? Is I am that guy, but, no, wait. <laughs> I am, I am not that guy, but I am that fellow.